one. Hi, everybody. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday tea time. We have a very special guest for you today. We've got Miss Lisa. Okay. Hi. Spilling tea. Caroline Boyd sent me the cutest cup. Y'all, I got it her. too. Mine's look at her. I love her. She is so I love cute. It. Mm -hmm. Um, how was your weekend? Your weekend's good. Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> I just wanted to like not just like hardcore drop it all. I thought I'd wait a second for everybody to get on. Hi, everybody. Ha ha ha. Feisty here. How you doing? There's been a whole lot of whole lot a lot a lot of this week. Um, and quite frankly, I, I haven't I haven't read it all, I haven't seen it all. And because I've been working, it's amazing what happens. It's amazing how much drama you don't pay attention to when you actually fucking work. work and your then business. you turn off, you turn off whatever you're working on and you pull up messages and you're like, how do I have 879 messages? How did I just, I mean, it's only been like six hours. Anyway. Yeah, it's funny. What's up, everybody? So Lisa, I did not want to pronounce your last name wrong. It is so easy. I thought Champ it was Champanaria. Champanaria. I was going to say, champ is it Champanaria, Champanaria? I'm like. Okay. Champ and then an area. I, you know what I say? Carpenteria. Because <laughs> Carpenteria. Because we have a city, Carpen, Carpentria, Carpen, right? whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. Right. Oh, I've been called everything from champagne and I'm like, whatever. It's, it really is easy though. Champ I mean, and champagne's area. a pretty cool name. It could be yeah. worse. I mean, it, it could be worse. Except when you're in the Trust hospital me. getting ready to give birth and there's another champagne and you're like, they send me her meal and vice versa. And it's like, if they get our meals mixed up, are they going to get our babies mixed up too? That was Lord, I'd have been worried. I would have. Oh, I'd have been worried about that. No lie. Oh, no, my husband is actually Asian Indian. So whenever the babies are born, it's, they all do it. They put a dot on the foot. Trust me. So each Jaden and Suri both had dots on their foot with a permanent marker. So there was going to be no switching You're your like, babies up and all that stuff. Where's the dot on my baby? <laughs> wow. And I always was like, the minute they came out, go, go with them. I don't need anything. Go. Well, yeah, because you got a whole medical team. Somebody better not lose that baby. I work too hard. Right. I want baby. you to get there, get my baby washed, get it warm, get it back to my room. I'm That's not okay. They'll just give nursery. you another baby. It's not like you lose it all. <laughs> <laughs> give you another well, baby. Just, and you're like, dear Lord, maybe that would make it look at work. Never mind. It's a bad joke. <laughs> I'm telling never you, mind. I never bad worried joke. that any of my kids were my, they all looked exactly the same when they were born. They all looked like each other. Like there was no, like after the first one, after Caroline was like, oh yeah, that's my, that one and that, they're my kids. It's all right. That, well, here's the thing. thing. I walk into the board after I've been, um, I did have some problems with that delivery and I just sent AC with the, or a chef with the baby. And when I walk in, because they haven't brought him back yet, I see Champagne, the one whose meal I got in Champagneery and they've got us literally marked in red. And it's a girl too. Well, my daughter had dark hair because my husband has dark hair. That girl, I mean, the baby is, like I said, I'm glad he put the dot on and I'm glad he never left the nursery. So, yeah. Okay. Fine. Well, Lisa, yeah. we wanted to give you the opportunity to let everybody know why you wanted to come on Tea Time and then go with your story. And in any play, I've got a few things to help you with. So you just let me know when you want yep. me to jump in and okay. we're ready. Well, first of all, I want to thank Jerry, Tracy, Caroline, for doing this whole tea time. It did start out about convention, right? But it's ran so much deeper than that since, okay? It has. And the thing that gets me the most is we're being portrayed as, you guys mainly, are being portrayed as troublemakers, like you're not gonna let it go, and that you're keeping this whole thing going, and you're not. I came to you, consultants are coming to you. You're it's not true. begging, you're not searching for these people they're coming to you and you are spending your precious time. As we know, both of you have successful businesses. I mean, Jerry, she could go live 24 seven, but she takes the time out to share our stories and to help others out there. And so in thank opening, you. I want to thank you all three of you for doing this because it does You're make welcome. a difference and you are helping so many people, Caroline, you two being able to share their story. Um, mine is not as painful as a lot that I've learned from being, in the group that we're in. I mean, I've wanted to cry at some of the people to yeah. the extent where, you know, gonna lose their house, <laughs> how they bought in and it's just crazy, but that I don't wanna go all over the place. So what I wanna do is, cause we're being told that all of us are telling our story have been fired or terminated and we're angry. That's not the case. 
So I'm big on, I'm going to show you, I'm not, I, everything that I tell you, I have receipts for, um, and, and you know, there's, there's two sides to every story and then there's screenshots ladies. And I have the screenshots. Okay. So yes! I, will be, I, will be, right, I will be more than happy to post them afterwards, wherever they need to be. Cause awesome. I lost my phone. I'm on my husband's, but anyway, to start this out, so you all can see, this is actually my letter to paparazzi's compliance. Okay. And I thought it was. It's actually a pretty good read, and I can't see up close. That's what happens when you get in your 40s. Girl, right, you're ladies? good. You're Y'all good. Y'all can attest. Okay. So, again, this is my termination letter, and it was dated on the 15th of October. Um, I actually had been done before that, but I thought that I would have to wait to get – I was only bronze. I was a few hundred away from silver, but I wasn't going to buy it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, I was like, piss on them. I'm, I'm not going to buy their Z pieces anyway, and if they – What my, year? Um. This past year, I was almost, okay. I was 400 pieces from silver. And this is me not going live, okay? Um, and I'll tell you after I, the convention exactly what happened with me. I actually became sick, found out I had a brain tumor. It's a whole long story. Oh, my gosh, but, girl, Yeah, but I'm, I'm so okay. glad you're still here. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's on my pituitary. It's actually 11 by 7 millimeters. Um, but I'm doing wonderful. If I ever Good. start to have the bad headaches like I did, and I mean falling and passing out, then I have to see my um, neurologist and have more like uh, MRIs and CT scans done, but I'm blessed. Uh, so anyway, let me start out with my letter to compliance and then their response. The response is hysterical. I didn't get no good wishes or best wishes on your endeavors. Okay. Let me okay. um real quick. And then we're going to, okay. let me say this. So what we're going to talk about today is how there seems to be an ongoing trend in paparazzi with them discriminating against people with disabilities. Yeah. And this is going to be one story, Lisa, we had other people lined up, but they also have jobs and lives. Um, so she had to work, but Tracy, she's been one of those people who's always been very, very much in the forefront of fighting with, for the people's, um, uh, disadvantages with the disabilities that paparazzi presents. And you're going to be quite shocked with how they treat it and how they feel about it. Uh, and then Tracy is also going to chime in with some of her stories. And we will have more of these people later on on shows. Yes. So everybody couldn't be on today, but we do have some people lined up for future dates to talk about this topic. But yes. this is important because paparazzi accessories is not treating people with any kind of a challenge with any any sort of um, accommodation or even kindness. It's not even about their inability to do it. It's about their attitude toward it. That is the, mm -hmm. the worst part of all. So correct, Lisa, I know you want to read your letter that you didn't correct. even get best witches on your future endeavors. How no, wait till you, oh, they were glad to get rid of me. <clears throat> they wanted me to, sh they, they didn't know what to say. And this is why. Dear wonderful paparazzi compliance, this letter sure has been a long time coming. My husband and I would like to formally give you our resignation. We no longer believe in your company nor what it stands for. There are many out there who listen to the Geraldine Souza's, Andrew Thompson's, Barbara Elifritz, Ashley Gaskins, Diona Fechner's, Tracy Reed's, Heather Dills, and countless other ex-consultants speaking the truth with proof about your company the voice their voices are loud and you cannot silence them soon my voice will be heard as i've been silent for the and um as for the past three years and i will be silent no longer i'd like to share with you the fact that i know heather dill and diona fechner i also know how you terminated diona and ended up releasing her commission state um, check after she went viral with her open letter about paparazzi accessories. Heather Dill resigned after being suspended multiple times and having her integrity um, insulted. You refuse to release her commission check she earned up to the day she resigned. Heather is a fighter and she will not back down from what is right and what is wrong. I don't blame her. See. You are showing favoritism and proving that you do as you please, when you please, and could care less the effects that you have on your consultants. I highly suggest you rethink about your, your decision and do the right thing here. Now, for the even bigger disappointment, 
with your company is how you've responded to the numerous consultants who lost their lives or fell ill, who lost their lives attending, con attend attending convention. You know, the one you had in August, the one where you did not enforce your um, wear your mask mandate. Hold on just a second. And that was in place the entire duration of your convention. The one you should not, the one you would not consider making virtual versus in person. Yet you did cancel Life of the Party Diamond and above due to COVID. Wow, stunner there. You refused to acknowledge any of those consultants who lost their lives to COVID because they attended your convention. Too much bad publicity for your company to do so. Many have re lost respect for each and what each one of the founders. I know I sure have. Lastly, my husband and I earned life of the party as of June 30th and, and expect to receive our convention pack pieces as stated we would. The fact that it has taken your company so long to send them is not our fault. Oh, and if you would like to hear my story, I'm sure you've heard all about Tea Talk Tuesday. The <laughs> one where Tracy, um, Tracy Reed and Geraldine Souza talk about, I said, you can watch via YouTube or Facebook. <laughs> yep, boys. Yep. Um, I'll be telling my story real soon with proof of every word I say. It's going to be real. I've got a, oh no, I don't want to share the second part. Y'all know what that is. And you know what I'm saying? I don't want to share that part about the other one. But okay. anyway, it says, um, okay. No, I don't want to, I don't want to go too deep on that one. So anyway, I said, um, more will come to light. A very sad situation that could have been avoided had your company not been so greedy. You sure did. You sure didn't have a problem canceling events that unlike convention would cost you money. So glad to be free from this cultish like MLM company. Regards, Lisa and Ashes Champanaria. Okay. Oh, some of you in the group are, are in the thing are asking, when will you hear back from compliance? They have, or when they put that resignation, they haven't heard and it's been weeks. Oh, I heard within seconds of reading this. And this is what we got back. We have canceled your account as per instructions. Neither of you is eligible to re-enroll. The life of the party convention pieces that ship in November will be shipped to you. Period. The end. <laughs> Not best wishes? No, best no. regards. Yeah, because if you, this is my thoughts now. Compliance. I the tea, literally. I attorney, but you tell me Misty Kirby and Trent are reading that. Come on. They are the ones that have the final say on who gets terminated and who doesn't. So, yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. Correct Mundo. Okay. So, y'all have read, I didn't get terminated. This was of my own free will. We're going to start with 2017 convention. Yes. Okay. So, when did you join paparazzi officially? I, I, I can take these reading glasses off you, lady. Okay. Ladies, um, I joined um, Paparazzi Accessories um, September of 2016. Okay, so you were in you were in quite a long time, about five years. Right, right. Um, I joined, and, and here's the difference between me and some consultants: is I didn't need paparazzi. Okay, I wanted paparazzi because after being in a car accident and having an autoimmune disease, Hashimoto's, sick all the time, I didn't have any adult conversation. Okay. So to me, when I saw the jewelry, the first time I even saw it, I bought 15 pieces. And then when I saw it, I'm like, I can do this. Did it give, this will give me a reason where I can get out and, and have time with ladies, if nothing else. Right. So when I first got the pieces, I liked the jewelry. Um, this is something I, I ran with it. I mean, I wanted to do it. It gave me my women time. I mean, like Jerry, you guys, you work from home. You see the women that help you pack and stuff. Other than that, and this, you you're constantly at your house, right? Working All the time. All so the time. That was my main thing is I want to do this. And, and, and just a little backtrack. In 1999, I actually had to walk away from a job where I was making over 70000 a year because I was attacked. I don't talk about that much. But from an owner of a company, a man who was old enough to be my grandfather, put his hands on me, but I was able to get away 
but it was nasty. I had to hide. Um, it was a, a very dark time. So I thought I'm so sorry when I disappeared. I'm so sorry. That's terrible. I'm so sorry. It, it is. And so it, it was bad, but I'm better. But I never thought that I would have a purpose again. Now, I loved being a stay-at-home mom and raising my kids. But the Lisa, before that happened to me, I loved my job. Customer satisfaction was, I was huge on. I could fix these problems, you know, and without giving away that, I was in the automotive industry, without giving away this or that. It's just being real, you know. I loved taking care of my customers. So anyway, paparazzi did give me that opportunity to be around women again. And it did give me a purpose in the beginning, okay? I joined in September of 2016. My first convention was end of July, because now we're in August, but back 2016, or going into 2017, um, it was at the Hard Rock for the first time. Okay. Right, they had moved from the other place before that. So, now mind you, I'm 49 years old. Um, I was raised out in the boonies in the country, okay? I did leave home at an early age, and this all goes to the story too. Um, I've been, my ex-husband was military, so I've traveled on planes to Okinawa, Japan and back, but I've never been in big cities by myself. When I hear Las Vegas, there's three things that I think of. Gambling, wedding chapels, and drugs. That's what Las Vegas, that's what I think of when I think of that, okay? So here I am, and, and this is going to lead into what happened at convention. So I was actually a part of Rochelle Beachy's downline and also Heather's, um, and we'll touch base on that. But um, I had actually been in a car accident on Friday, right? Bef and then I was set to leave on Saturday to fly out to Las Vegas. I was sideswiped. And in this car accident, I got out to try and find the woman that actually witnessed it. And I ended up twisting my ankle. And then also my knee hit the dashboard and I twisted. I could tell I come out of tore a little bit of cartilage or the meniscus or something like that. This wasn't oh right. God. You knew it wasn't right. Yeah. Right. But there was no stopping me. I was going to that convention. Okay. So this is on a Friday on Saturday night, Saturday, I leave to go to convention. Okay. My husband makes it as simple as it be because he's traveled frequently. He makes sure I can get on the plane right away. I don't get, you know, have any panic or any anxiety at the airport. He lays it all out for me and makes sure I can board before others for anxiety reasons and stuff. So it, the flight there was wonderful. I get there um, Sunday, Rochelle, all the other consultants were coming there and there was a group chat and it was like, okay, now, so when I got to the hotel, when I got to there on Saturday evening, um, I had already rented a wheelchair, okay? I needed a wheelchair because I knew there was no way with my knee and my ankle that I could walk right. and do the things in convention. See, I was wondering, okay, I was wondering why was she in a wheelchair? Thank you for that. Okay. Yeah, because now, and, and mind you, my husband had called and rented me one, and it should have been the silver ones that you see, right? That will actually hold, like, if your left foot, it's my left knee, my left foot, that yeah. was twisted and hurt. You should have a place to, to, to rest your foot there, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Push it out if you need straight, whatever. I didn't catch on to this at first, but the first wheelchair that I was put in was a black wheelchair, Okay. And it was very hard to push. So it's taken everything in my power and in my arms to push myself around to, the, you know, the Hall of Fame they had in Hard Rock, the big halls where all the uh, yeah. life of the party yeah. and all the, yeah, that thing. So I went and looked at that and stuff like that. And I had pushed myself everywhere. So then Sunday comes and Rochelle sends out a thing. Everybody want to go next door to um, have dinner at the Mexican restaurant. So I'm like, I have nothing else better to do. Now, mind you, I had been icing my knee and my ankle, and actually, I do have chronic pain in my back, so my doctor will write for a pain prescription. We're talking about 60, but that lasts me six months, okay, because I will not take it unless the tears are going to come, but thank God I had that because here's what happens. So, Sunday evening, I'm in a wheelchair that I learned later was not the wheelchair my husband rented. The Hard Rock put me in one of theirs. They dropped the ball. And the wheel was actually broken. And that's going to lead to what I'm fixing to tell you. Okay. This can't so, be good. This can't no, be not. good. It's yeah. Not. So we go across the street from the Hard Rock. We're CVS. And then there's a little Mexican restaurant in that shopping center. It's Rochelle Beachy and her husband, Merle, and about five other consultants with their husband. I sat and played with uh, Isabel the whole time. 
because I didn't really fit in with the whole conversation. Who's okay? Isabel? Isabel is the daughter, the adopted child of Rochelle Beachy and Merle Beachy. Okay? okay, mind you, I don't know anything about this woman except for she talks in third person, which drives me crazy. Rochelle Beachy wants to talk to y'all. So that's the only thing I know about that crazy woman. Okay, when I am going to shed light on her. Okay, so... So I'm going to tell the convention thing, and then I'm going to tell you all about Rochelle Beachy and what she said to Heather about selling her soul to the devil. No, sweetie, she's the one that sold herself to the devil and totally ditched her religion. But that's another story after I finish convention, because I will lose the train of thought if I don't finish it. So anyway, I go and have dinner. They're talking this and that, and I'm like, I even told Heather this afterwards. I'm like, the whole conversation, these people eat, sleep, die, rank, this, that. I mean, every two minutes, they're checking Checking, checking dinners. There are more orders on there. Is she going to hit rank? Is she going to do that? I wasn't all about that. I wanted to sign. I wanted to sell. If somebody wanted to join my team, great. But I didn't push anybody. You know what I'm saying? And then later on, when shipping got bad, I wasn't going to sign anybody up and say, oh, without telling them, by the way, you know, shipping is taking a long time, you know, because what if they had to run their credit cards up in order to keep the stuff coming in? I couldn't do that. I was not going to sell my soul to for $5 jewelry to build a team. No. So anyway, Saturday night or Sunday night, I'm in a wheelchair that I shouldn't have been in, by the way. We have dinner. I hold and play with Isabel the whole time. They're talking, ranking up, checking their phones every few minutes, la di dotty. Afterwards, and, and, and one of the consultant's husbands, I don't remember her name, did push me, wheeled me over so I wouldn't have to push because I wouldn't have been able to keep up with them walking. They, he wheeled me over there to the restaurant, and after the restaurant, we went to CVS because I wanted to get a case of water to have in my room, right? Because I knew me getting up and down in and out. So anyway, keep in mind, I've got a whole 25 pack of water in my lap, in this wheelchair that I should have never been in, okay? Uh, the 24 case of water is sitting on my lap and I've got bruises, so that's what it came from. And one, I couldn't even show it. But anyway, so we have dinner, we go to CVS, we get the water, we're coming back. We're literally on the sidewalks coming this way and the entrance into the hard rock, literally, there's like a little go down. And the, the gentleman that was pushing me, a husband, a, cons, a husband of a consultant, the wheel on that literally broke. And I went down oh. into halfway in the road and halfway in the driveway of the hard rock cafe. Okay. Rochelle and Merle and the rest. And this guy, this guy that pushed me, he was hurt too. Okay. I so I'm sitting here. My, now, this time my wrist wasn't hurt. But when we fell, the water went crashing all over me. I, my hand went down. Um, it hurt my hand too. And I, okay, and mind you, I'm in a wheelchair. I got to push myself in. So anyway, this stranger walking by, because they're like, well, what do we do? They're standing there looking like this gentleman. And I'll never forget. He's like, oh my God, get them up. There's a semi coming. All right, a semi coming at us. Because we are high, literally half of our bodies are in the street. And the other half are in the entrance to the parking this lot. This is of, horrible. I'm so sorry. Oh, and it gets worse. It gets worse. <coughs> so already I'm bruising right away on my wrist. It's swollen. Um, my knee. I'm about to, I mean, I'm crying. It's hurting. It's bad. I was in pain. And come to find out the guy who pushed me, he twisted his ankle. And I don't know what all else happened. So that goes on. They We go. Rochelle goes with me and we go to the office and they take us, if you have any kind of incident there or anything, whatever, they take you behind closed doors. Okay. Back to where security is. And that's when I realized that the wheelchair I was in was one of their wheelchairs. Okay. It wasn't in the wheelchair. It was not the wheelchair that I had rented from the scooter company that also does reach wheelchairs. So first of all, hard rock dropped the ball on me by putting me in one of their wheelchairs. OK, I should have never been in that wheelchair. And I realized when when I was sitting back there. So anyway, I'm hurt. They're taking pictures and it's just like and the ambulance comes and they're like, you really need to go to the hospital. Now, mind you, Rochelle did have um, Isabel and I can't remember exactly how she was. She was a baby, but Merrill was there. OK, here I am. No other teammates there. I don't know anybody other than the few ladies I met at dinner. Right. And Rochelle, she wouldn't go to the hospital with me. The ambulance is like, you really need to go. And I'm like, no way. I am not going to an ambulance. I, could you imagine when I enter to an ER in Las Vegas 
by myself. I've never done Uber. I've never done Lyft. I've never rode a city bus. I have no clue. Yeah, I'm going to get there by ambulance, but how am I going to get back? And what am I going to do? You know what I'm saying? I was scared to death to go by myself. So she, you know, like I said, Merle, now if the shoe would have been on the other foot, and can I ask you, Tracy, and can I ask you, Jerry, if you had a teammate that you watched fall to the ground? Oh, my God. <clears throat> I, I did. <clears throat> Sorry. I'm, I'm. That's I why Tracy got canceled. That's I, did Tracy have, got canceled. I did have a friend. Trust me. <laughs> no. Would not go with me. I've done. I've done less than that for teammates. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, right. are you kidding me right now? I can't even imagine that it would have been, um, a, a, it wouldn't have even been, uh, we'd have been, I'd have been calling 911. You'd have been in an ambulance. You wouldn't have even been sitting at the hotel waiting for somebody to assess whether or not they were liable. Cause that's the thing. They wanted to find out what they were liable for. They should have called an ambulance and taken you right away. The fact that they took you in the back and didn't call 911. Correct. You would have been staying right where you were until the paramedics came to help you. Which they and did. And we'd have been did. on our way to the hospital, period. And yes, they said, girl. you yes, really girl. need to go. You really And would need I have go. gone with you? A thousand percent. Don't ever doubt it. Right. Anybody with any sense of kindness or decency would have gone. And if for any reason I couldn't have, I would have made sure... Somebody. somebody I trusted would have been with you to go. Yeah. Like if you were a, a gentleman and you didn't want a lady with you, I'd have found a gentleman to get like you to just whoever you were most comfortable with, anybody you knew, whatever. Somebody, somebody would have gone. Made me go there by myself. Because what did I tell you? When I think of Las Vegas, I think of casino, but gambling, weddings, and drugs. I was so you were to just death. really, you were just already really scared before you were even hurt, and then yeah, okay. Look. I work at a I worked at a hospital for 22 years. I wouldn't want to go to uh the I wouldn't want to go by myself. Like that's crazy. Lisa, I it wouldn't be you wouldn't even I wouldn't even had to know you. We we stopped Correct. on the street and helped strangers. Like nobody Correct. Where is the golden rule, people? Would you not hurt to to treat others as you would want to be treated? If right. I was laying on the street hurt and no one stopped to help me, I, my heart first of all, my heart would be broken if my child or myself or anybody and my fit did not stop and help you, I'd have been horrified. Meanwhile, Rochelle, Merle, the other consultants are just sitting there. A passerby helped get us up and out of the way because they were just like froze. And, it, and the guy's like, man, you got to come on. There's a semi coming. And he literally jerks us up to get us up out the way from us being hit by a semi. I'm okay. so sorry. I'm glad you're okay. I'm glad somebody had some decency. I'm so sorry this happened. So keep in mind. Maybe, maybe I, it's because maybe it's because Rochelle was wearing her crown and she didn't want it to fall. I don't even want to speculate as to why it did not, that anything went through her head other than let's Rochelle, get Lisa to the hospital. Rochelle Beachy is beyond helping anybody get up off the ground. I've never met the woman that I can recall, and I'm not sorry. <laughs> no, you're not. No, you're not. Because we're a pretty good judge of character. You guys are. I am. And I told Heather from the beginning, she's fake. She's fake. And she is. And then we'll get into her religion and all that in just a minute. So anyway, um, I'm not going. The, the paramedics do come. They check me. They really think I need to get my wrist, deafening me like my leg. Like I said, I was bruising and everything. And I'm like... I can't. They probably I wanted was, to do x-rays. Right. They wanted me to go. Um, and I was just like, I can't do this. This I'm is not the going. day was, after she got in a car accident. Right. Yep. Right. So Sunday night, um, actually security comes after Rochelle. I'm like, I'm not going. I'm not going by myself. And she wouldn't offer. She wasn't going. She went back to her room. But she did tell me she would pray for me. Okay. Oh, well, that's super helpful. Yeah, of course. Oh, I, wait till I, you I, don't, this other I don't know. I don't know about you, but I literally hang every day. I hang on the fact that Rochelle Beachy is praying for me. Fast. I, I have God in my heart and I'm a Christian. The worst thing I do is say cuss words. And when I'm really upset and you will, and this is a warning, a trigger warning. You will hear some cuss words in a minute when I tell you about how I was cussed out by another consultant. So if you're listening and you have this volume up and you have a six-year-old 
or younger <laughs> or even a 13 year old because god knows if my 13 year old was here she'd be in the other room she wouldn't be listening to this because there is adult conversation and adult wording used in here so i'm putting that out there right now because it will lead to some nasty stuff because i'm going to give you verbatim word for word what happened to me afterwards okay Ew. Just the fact that you know you're going to watch a feisty video should be the very reason why you don't have your volume up on speakerphone letting your kids hear this shit. Because I'm going to say F and F and F and F and F and F you F and M and fucking F and. So right. come on, people. Come on. Right. Okay. Done. And so, yeah. So anyway, so I'm putting that warning out there right now. And so keep in mind what I'm saying. I'm not an angry Maybe I am holding a little bit of anger because of what I went through. Well, girl, let it and out. And that's why I wanted to share my story so I can move <laughs> past it after I do. But anyway, I'm not just dis- uh, this. Any- anyway, you get what I'm trying to say. So I want to stay on course so I can get through this too. And so anyway, you know, I don't want to go to Vegas. I mean, I don't want to go to the emergency room by myself. So security does come up. Okay. Now, mind you, I'm still in their wheelchair that was broken on the end, on the, 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 the front wheel, the front wheel was the whole problem. And they had to like push me a certain way so I didn't get dropped again out of there. Okay? Oh my God. Yeah. What? Wait, oh, there's more. <laughs> there's more. I'm already just like. Yeah. So I get the security follows me and the, the desk is calling me and everything. And they're like, um, they bring me ice and um, so that I can ice it up and everything. Ice my leg up, elevated the foot, the arm, everything. So, um, Sunday night, like I said, they were really nice security begged me to go. And I said, I can't, I'm not going there. I'm scared to death to go, you know, I'll just deal with it with what I've got to deal with it. I'll stay off of it. And the only place I did, you know, even when you're in that room with a wheelchair and a scooter, you can't ride it from your bed to your bathroom. So I did have to like limp to go to the bathroom. Okay. Or to get my clothes out. But I only was on that leg when I absolutely had to be. And thank God I did have some pain medicine for I have a bad back that, like I said, a script of pain medicine would last me over six months because I don't take it unless I'm on the verge of tears. Right. And I have to do something. So anyway, um, I did have one. So I took one of the pain pills, which helped. I kept it elevated. I had ice on it. Um, they called to check on I me. Mean, security did on um, the front desk. And so uh, Monday comes around and Monday morning, they sent the guy that's uh, he's in charge of like all the room service and stuff. And he actually personally came Monday morning and brought me this big old, you know, in your refrigerator, you can pull out those plastic drawers that you put your fruit in or your veggie, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a crisper yeah. one. He literally bought me this big, huge container of ice because he knew me having to get up and, and will myself down there to the ice that was God only knows where. So he brought that. He made the ice bags for me. He was wonderful. And I actually ended up seeing him again when I went to convention in 2018. So anyway, um, so keep in mind, because this is leading up to something. I had been icing my leg. I had been elevating it. I had been taking the medicine that I had. Okay. And I knew that I needed to go to the emergency room. But again, I did not want to go by myself. Okay. So I knew it was just a matter of either Monday night or Tuesday, I would definitely go, but I wasn't going to go by myself. So like I said, Monday comes, I hadn't even registered for convention. I I couldn't get down there. Right. And this is now remind you, I'm in the black wheelchair, not the silver one that my husband rented for me. Right. And now when I hurt my wrist and sprained it, I can only will myself with my right hand and my right leg. So I'm literally, when I'm trying to, it's my le- right leg and my right hand because I can't do crap with my left side now because my left side is the one that was hurt previously and the hand that I've now sprang or doing whatever I did with. So Monday night rolls around, Heather Dill and Debbie Rowe, okay? And this is before Heather knew Debbie Rowe's true colors, okay? They had taken the flight from Greenville together. Um, I had said we could all room together. So anyway, they arrived Monday, late Monday afternoon. And there was some things that, you know, was being the way that Debbie was talking. I was kind of like, just like taken aback, but I didn't say anything because like I said, I'd never really been around her to see how she talks or what type of person she was or anything like that. But I'm the type of person that I'm going to treat you the way that I want to be treated. If I, I would give you the shirt off my back. 
if I know that you're truly trying to come back and really do something good with your life based on whatever it's you've been through in the past, I'm going to help you any way I can, because I would hope that if the shoe's on the other foot and I ever needed that, I would have somebody like me out there that would do the same for me. Okay. So there was some talk and some stuff and I was just like, okay, just be quiet. But, and I could see Heather rolling her eyes at a few times, like, oh my God, what have I got myself into? Right. <laughs> like, oh. So, yeah. This was Glitter Rosy was Monday night. Now, mind you, I haven't signed in. I haven't registered. I haven't done nothing. Debbie gets Heather and out the door they are. They go. There is a consultant, and I'm going to say Lori and her husband, and they are still consultants. So I'm not going to like, call them out because I, I can say that they are good people and they're the ones that were my saving grace. Okay. So she had messaged me because she'd heard what happened and she was like, I'm like, because I had actually won the uh, the thing or, or the party hopper thing because you had to have signed up for Ken's Invention mm -hmm. in time and you had to hit the party hopper in order to go to Glitterazi, which was held at this one of the rooms in the um, at, at the hotel and they served hors d'oeuvres and yeah. So the only reason why I was able to go is because of Lori and her husband. They actually took my ID and went and registered me through convention um, and pushed me there and everything. So, and this leads into Tuesday. So they've already done, cause I'm not one to ask for help. Okay. I'm just not one to ask for help. I'm going to figure out a way to do it. Even if it takes one, one arm pushing me, what have you. But now, Monday after I fell that morning, my husband had called the wheelchair company and said, uh, my wife got hurt in your wheelchair. And so they're like, wait a minute. And so he describes the wheelchair they're in and they're like, uh, that's not the wheelchair we sent for your, for your wife. And he's like, excuse me, you know, cause he explained it was black. It was this night. And that's when I found out. And even this Sunday night I'd seen that's, that was theirs. I should have never been in it. Nobody should have been in that wheelchair ever. It was broken. It was damaged. The front wheel is what caused the fall. So they send the silver chair that I should have been with. Well, that's all fine and dandy, but guess what? Because of that fall in the wheelchair I shouldn't have been in, I could not push myself. Again, it's going to take my right arm and my right leg are the only thing that's really working here. Okay. So my husband called and they said, okay, we'll get her a scooter and we'll have it there tonight being Monday night. Well, that's why Lori and her husband helped me because my scooter never arrived. Had it arrived, I would have used my scooter. You know what I'm saying? And got there. Right. So Tuesday morning. So Lori and her husband take us. We don't stay too, too long. It was boring. So when we come back, I get ready for bed. Um, I still had, I had already iced my leg that day and time, but I wasn't going to ask for help to get wheeled down to the ice machine and stuff. Okay. But I had, keep in mind, I had been icing it Sunday night and all the way leaning up till Monday afternoon. So glitterize is over. I come back, I take some medicine, I go to bed, I wake up Tuesday morning, it's general session. Okay. Heather pushes me to general session when it's break time, right? Um, Lori and her husband, reach over to me like you want to go with us and I'm like no 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 I do not want to impose you guys took such great care of me last night don't worry I'll be okay well I thought because they hadn't announced this that I would just sit in the room right during the break I won't go anywhere I can just sit right here well then they announced that everybody must leave okay so I'm like I didn't even say anything because Rochelle Beachy there was a contest and if you want it, which Rochelle had, and she did a contest in her group in the downline. And so what it was is she was allowed to shop the Z collection early. This was 2017. And she was allowed to have one guest. So actually Heather had won the contest and was her guest. So Heather and Rochelle, before we were dismissed, go early to shop the Z collection, right? So that's when I'm sitting there, Lori and them asked, do you want me to, you know, go with us? We'll push. I'm like, no, you guys were great. I do not want to impose but thank you so much. And again, I thought I was going to sit there. Then I hear that and I'm like, oh crap. But I was sitting there and the next thing I know, I did not ask Debbie Rowe to push me, nothing. Well, imagine when those doors open, were one of you there in 2017 when we were at the Hard Rock? for the I, didn't mean, I didn't even join till September of 2017. Okay. I wasn't even a consultant then. Me neither. Okay. 
So did you go, you, did you, were, but you were at the Hard Rock before, right? I have been to the, I went to the Hard Rock in 2018's convention. So Me yeah, too. I've been to the Hard okay. Rock. I'm familiar okay. with it. Okay, so yeah. you know those huge double doors to the side that lead, yes. the left leads you up a ramp to go to the part of the uh, hotel. Yeah. And if yes. you straight, you go up another way, okay? Right. So what happens when those doors are open? Everybody's rushing out like a herd of cattle, okay? Being, busting out the gates. The more that she grabs a hold of me, there's a lady which I can tell you what she wore, what she looked like four years later to this day. Okay. She hits, bumps me into that lady and my left leg and foot hit that lady. And I'm like, I'm sitting here. All right. And then it wasn't 20 seconds later, I get hit again into the lady in front of me who I only see the back side of her. And I can tell you what she was wearing, a blue shirt and either blue pants or a blue skirt. I could only see her behind. So I get rammed in this lady again. And each time my leg is getting hit, okay? And while she's ramming me into people, she's telling me how, cause she was an EMT or something that if I was really hurt, now mind you, she's leaning over to me. So the people that she's with can't even hear her talking to me. And she's telling me, well, if you were really hurt, you'd be icing it and you'd be going over to CVS to get bandages and all this. And I'm like, who was this? Debbie Rowe. First of all, what? I didn't ask you to grab a hold of my wheelchair. Oh, I didn't ask you to push me. She just tried to make you feel bad about feeling bad. If basically I was faking it. Okay. I was faking Ooh. it. While she's ramming me into people, and again, I can tell you what each one of them look like to this day, four years later. So that's the second time I'm hitting. Now, mind you, I've twisted my ankle and I've twisted something in my knee. And I know I've probably, like I said, I think it, it feels like a slightly torn cartilage or more on my meniscus, the lining of my knee, because I've done that before. Exactly she is a like. nasty piece of so work. In the meantime, she's talking to me like I'm a piece of trash. Okay. Now. Before I go on any further, because we forgot this, before I set the stage about Debbie Rowe, will you please read what was shared before through Heather? Yes, about I Debbie have. Rose? I'm going to show you all the screenshots. Okay. So you can see it. And then I'm going to read, read what she said, how she talked to another consultant or about another so consultant. So I have it on this giant iPad so y'all can see that here's the receipt, okay? <sighs> Debbie Rowe. This is Debbie Rowe speaking. Is that bitch Leah still causing problems? Question mark. I've about had enough of her. I've already deleted and blocked her from my team group. And whoever she sent this to said, I'm not sure if she is or not. Debbie Rose says, I want to throat punch her. It was all I could do to keep from going redneck on her in Atlanta at EMP. It's sad that she's so jealous that she is trying to sabotage people's businesses the girl seriously has issues. Here's where she physically threatened. In case you're wondering, there's Debbie Rose head. Physically threatened. She wants to throat punch her. So the person that I'm telling you about that ran me into the two people actually ended up being three. And I'll finish that. Talk to me like I was, if you were really hurt, you should have been icing it and you should have already been over to CVS getting the bandage for it and this and that. And I'm just like in shock. I'm like, no, this ain't happening. This ain't happening. And I said to my Jesus, take the will. Because one thing is I'll take and I'll take and I'll take. But when I'm past taken, I will snap. Okay. I'm already in pain. I've been knocked into two people. And it's like, what the hell? Pardon my friends, but what the hell? What is the rush to get out of those doors? Leave me. So anyway, as soon as we make it out the door, we make it about 10 feet to go up the ramp to go towards the pink taco. And I get hit the third time into a lady who had on a peach coral color outfit in front of me, long blondish brown hair. Okay. I get hit. And this is Debbie Rowe still pushing your wheelchair and just shoving this is you Debbie in. Debbie Rowe, because it all happened so fast. And I'm like, she, and that's when I was hit again. Now, mind you, my left foot is being propped up on that one thing. And that's the first thing that hits the people. And they're turning around and in the middle of getting hit, I'm like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. She still doesn't slow down three people she hit me and, and it hit my ankle and my knee when I hit them it hit my foot which jarred me caused me more pain so she pushes me and I'm like what am I gonna do Lisa calm down so she gets in front of the pink taco that's right there and I looked up at her and I said you can leave me right here 
Her eyes about popped out of her head. I get to grab the wheelchair with my right hand, the wheelchair and my good leg because all these people are around and I scoot myself to find a place like to the sides of the slot machine or something so nobody can see me because I was so angry, okay? I start crying and actually before I was trying to get there, this nice gentleman actually said, ma'am, can I help you? And that's just when the tears were like, please and thank you. So he got me away from everybody. And I thanked him so much for helping me. And I just got on the phone to my husband. And I said, please, I was bawling. And I said, just get me my scooter. Get me my scooter. And he's like, what's wrong? And I said, and I, I tried to tell him, but I'm, I'm crying. I can't catch my breath. And it's just like, find out where my scooter is. And he's like, okay, I'll call you right back. But I'm flying to Vegas. I'm coming to get you. I'm going to be there. I said, just get me my scooter. So I'm to the side, I'm trying to cover my face so nobody sees or anything. And I'm just like, I was so mad and so hurt that I, I'm, I'm bawling. And so he calls me back and he says, Lisa, your scooter has been sitting there since Monday night. Again, the Hard Rock Hotel dropped the ball on me. Because had I had that scooter Sunday, Monday night, I wouldn't have needed any help on Tuesday. Which, again, I never once asked Debbie Rowe to grab a hold of me and run me into three people. I would have been perfectly fine sitting there until all the people had emptied out of, the, of the, where the general sessions was. Okay? So, he, it wasn't two minutes. He called me back and he says, Lisa, you need to go to the bellhop. It's waiting right there. And he says, it's been there since Monday night. They dropped the ball on you. So, I'm like, I start. I'm trying to wipe away my tears. And again, I've got my right side working and I'm in the right wheelchair this time, but I can't push myself all the way. So here I start wheeling with my right hand and pushing off the floor with my right leg because I can't do anything with my left. It's going to hurt too bad. Again, somebody was nice enough to grab me and say, ma'am, where are you going? I said, because I don't like to ask for help. But it was like, and, and they could tell I've been crying. So they pushed me over to the bellhop and I tell them who I am and they get me in the scooter and they give me a water and, and stuff to wipe my eyes out because they could tell I've, I've been crying, you know. So I get my scooter. You know, this has been a good time going by. Uh, I, I go to the bathroom with my scooter because you can get in, You can get into the bathroom. So I wipe my tears away. Um, I get a water. The, they gave me a water. So I did drink what I didn't eat. Because if I would have ate, I would have threw up. My nerves were so bad. Right. And I'm like, and my husband's like, I'm coming there right now. And I'm like, no, no, you're not. I've got my scooter. I'm going to figure this out and I'll let you know, but I'm going to be okay. So I get my scooter. I calm down. I drink my water, I refresh myself. And I go back when general session starts. Okay. So if you're in a scooter or you're in a wheelchair, how it should work is... They should open the doors to allow the handicap, the wheelchairs, the scooters, what have you, to go in first. No, ma'am, that's not how it works. When you were in line for general sessions, you went through all the zigzag lines and all that, okay, with consultants bumping into you, looking at you, because unless you're in a leg brace or something that's showing, they're going to think you're just, I'm sorry, overweight and lazy, pretty much. They're judging you because they can't see what's wrong with you. They think there's nothing wrong with you or you're lazy. No, that wasn't my case. But anyway, there's no going in again. You went in line, the whole nine yards. They did have these things in the floor where to leave where no chairs were so you could pull up in your wheelchair or your scooter. But again, you were going through the wait line and then busting in when everybody else was. So anyway. So just like to be clear. Nobody from the hotel or paparazzi staff was directing you to your own special entrance for people that needed extra help. Nobody with a wheelchair was getting in early or being assisted in any way. No. The okay. lines for the Z pieces, which I'll tell you, you had to go zigzag. In some, it was hard to even turn the scooter that I was in, okay? Um, it was hard to make the turns in beside it and the weight alone. So I go back to general sessions and I sit, somebody moves the chair and I'm in my wheelchair right there with the group. That, and I'm not being a Rochelle because from the beginning, I've always thought she was fake. She's not real. Anyway. Um, so 
Heather comes back and she looks at me because you could tell I had puffy eyes and stuff. And she looks at me and I said, because she had been shopping early at the Z Gallery. At this point, we had not been shopping yet. You didn't get to do that until after the second part of general sessions. Okay. So she looks at me and I'm still so mad and so upset and so hurt. And I said, it's not you. And then I put my eyes behind my head because who was sitting right behind me? Debbie Rowe. So she knew something was up. Now, again, Debbie Rowe and Heather, when they got there Monday afternoon, even to the evening, they were rooming with me. Okay. This is before I think Heather truly knew how Debbie Rowe was and daggone for sure before I knew how Debbie Rowe was. Sorry about that. Okay. So I sit there through that and then it's time to go look at the Z pieces. And so the second session it's it broke at like 12 and then i think it started again and i may be off on the hours a little bit like at two o'clock we're gonna say okay i was in line doing the zigzag with the scooter and you've only got so much to do it you shouldn't even been in that zigzag line right but you had to wait i waited in line for over four hours okay to get into the z gallery wow right during this time, thank God, I had met some other ladies and some other consultants that kind of heard my story and one of them was like, uh, as soon as we're done with this, you're gonna go to the hospital. You're gonna go to the ER, it was not on my team. Wonderful lady, she's an attorney, Cheryl's what we're gonna call her. And I was like, you would do that for me? You would go with me? My heart hurts that you were shocked that anybody would help you, that your experience was so bad that when someone actually helped you, you couldn't believe someone. I just can't even with, this is terrible. It is. So now at the time, so Heather knew something happened, but if she didn't know exactly what happened. And again, she had already, uh, when, when break was over for us to go shop, you know, I'm in line for four hours. I happen to meet Cheryl and then Jeanette actually set up the whole humor, but don't let me get a hold of myself. So, and, Cause I'm trying to set this up for a timeline, but it actually gets worse than this too. Oh so God. I tell Cheryl and I, what happened, how I got ran into three people. And I said, it's not going to be pretty. I have a temper and this girl we're dealing with is not a classy person at all. She's trashy. And it takes a lot for me to form an opinion like that. But I called it. I said, she's trashy. I said, so before we go to the ER, I want to go to the hotel desk, which she recommended too. So before I get ahead of myself, you know, we're in line for four hours to get the Z pieces. And at this time you needed to check those Z pieces before you left because so many of them were broke, damaged. And I'm not talking like I bought a lot of the bracelets a lot because I wanted to use them to boost my lives, right? Right. Left my sure. Because we can't sell them, right? First of all, you're going to sell 50 to 100 to a person to do giveaways, but you can't sell them. Okay, whatever. But I did. I bought them because they were beautiful, and I'm going to bless my customers. This is going to help me grow my show. Um, I wasn't really worried about building a team, like I said. So anyway, I buy a ton of the bracelets and a good amount of the Z. Not a lot. I didn't go crazy like I did with the bracelets on the Z necklaces because I knew, you know, come September when they were going to release them. And that's the year we found out that you were going to be able to sell the Z pieces. That was the okay? first year, right? 2017, yes, yes. right? Yes, that's what they announced to us is that, wow, you get to sell the pieces now. So, and even then I was like, first of all, I knew I had to lug that stuff home with me. And cause that's when you had to, you got this stuff on will call the pieces from convention the Z prices and all that. Yeah. Your luggage, you only get so much. I don't care how you fly with. And if you go over that weight limit, you're going to pay out the yin yang. You right. know that. Um, and it wasn't. It's cheaper to buy another seat for your suitcase. <laughs> right. Right. True. So, like I said, I did load up on the Z, those Z pieces, but the necklace, not so much. But almost every piece, and I am not lying, and Cheryl could vouch me. Right. There were so many broken pieces. But she had to help me open them because, again, I would hurt my left hand. So, I'm doing everything with my right hand. So she helps me. We go up to my room. She helps me do that. I, mean, I had not seen Debbie at this time, and I not had not seen Heather since Debbie ran me into the people, and I told her at the Pink Taco, you can leave me right here, okay? So we go through them, and she says, okay, Lisa. She goes back and takes down, or I go with her, but she pushes me to take back the broken pieces. And again, the broken pieces, we had to make sure that the pieces they were replaced with were okay. 
So finally, now mind you, it's two o'clock, four hours in line by the time you get there. So this is about 7.30, 8 o'clock at night that we're finally going to be able to go to the, to the hospital. Okay. So I said, and she, we talked about it. And I said, okay, let's go to the front desk. Okay. Now this should tell what type of person I am. I went to the desk and I told her this, I said, ma'am, I said, I have a room. It's in my name. And I have two ladies that are staying with me. I said, one of the ladies did something really awful. And I am almost certain something bad's going to come out of this. And what do I do? And I said, first of all, do you have any more rooms for the paparazzi convention ladies? First thing, anybody else wouldn't have gave a crap, but I did. I said, do you have any more rooms? Yes, ma'am. I said, so it won't be hard for Debbie because you know, Heather was welcome to stay. Heather hadn't done anything. And she was like, yes, ma'am. I said, okay, what do you suggest that I do? She said, well, the room is in your name. Um, and so I suggest we're going to deactivate their key card. You're going to be the only person in that room. Um, I said, when the, and they said, when you get back from the hospital, you come here and we will have security go with you back up to your room. Okay. Because I, I said, it, it's going to be ugly. I just had a feeling. I knew the way she talked to me, the way mm -hmm. she ran in those people, it was not going to be pretty. Okay. So I go to the hospital and Cheryl had my cell phone. The first call I get, so this is around eight o'clock. So about nine, something, nine thirty, I was back seeing a doctor. Okay. He was a wonderful guy. Thank God. Um, he was talking to me when Heather first called the first time and Cheryl said she could hear Debbie in the background, just cussing, going off. It was, it was bad. So I couldn't talk to Heather because the first time that Heather calls, I'm with the doctor. Okay. Right. And she's like, she's with the doctor, but you can go to the front desk. They've got another room for you. And as soon as we get back from the hospital, you know, you guys can come and get your stuff. Nothing's been bothered. We've only been back to the room to check the Z pieces. Right. So then Heather calls again. And that's when the doctor had came back in after sending me for x-rays and stuff, right? On my wrist, on my leg. Well, I knew nothing was broke in my leg. My wrist was very sprained for me landing on it and swollen and bruised. But I knew it was probably a tear. And that can only be detected in um, an MRI, basically. Mm -hmm. It's right, not going right, to show up right. on an x-ray. Mm -hmm. So when he, But he did all that. And he's like, what are you here for? And I'm like, he'd never heard of Pop Rocks. He was a wonderful doctor. And so I was like, you know, I told him what had happened. He's like, bless your heart. I said, I couldn't come Sunday and I was too scared. I've never been to Vegas. So he ends up seeing me because I end up in the hospital again. Yeah, I end up again. So anyway, this is Tuesday night. I'm in there. So she had called the second time. Heather called the second time. And you could hear Debbie in the background cussing like a sailor. And she's like, um, she tells Heather again, she's the doctor had came back to read me the results of the x-ray and stuff. And he had said to me, you know, I really don't want you on that knee at all, bearing any weight, but we can't put you on crutches because of your wrist. Wrist, mm -hmm. right. So he puts me, you know, the long, the longest knee braces you can possibly get yes. to mobilize you completely. He puts me in one of those. Okay. So I'm like, okay. And then he writes me, he says, do you have med?" I never, I, that's one thing. I've never asked for pain medicine thing. I, my doctor already knows the back problems that I have, my x-rays, um, not my x-rays, my MRIs, they tell it all. And my, my practice, I don't have to go to pain management. I refuse to do that because I don't take pain medicine every day. And to me, to go pee in a cup and, and see the ones that really are there that have addiction to pain medicine, it's like, that's not me. And, I, and so anyway, he actually said, you're going to need something stronger than what you have. So he actually wrote a script for me for pain medicine. He says, you need to be off of this knee. He put me in that big thing. And so I'm like, okay. Well, then he, but first, so he rides through doors and I go to this other room. It's like, it's not the triage, but it's where like the guy, if you needed a cast would cast you. Oh he yeah. 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 In a sling Cause he doesn't want me to move my wrist more than I have to. And he had wrapped it too. Again, I'm getting ahead of myself. He had wrapped my wrist in like the pre thing before they put a cast on. Cause the sling comes Wednesday night, I think. So anyway, and then he puts me in the long brace. Okay. So Heather had called again, Debbie in the background, while I was in the room getting the sling and the brace and all that. I still can't talk. But Cheryl had said, you can get another room and get, you know, it. she'll call you as soon as she can. So then, you know, it, we get out of there and they're calling uh, uh, Uber, okay? 
And so imagine how I had to get in the back seat of that Uber. I've got a full long mm-hmm. brace on me. Okay? I can't even imagine. I mean, you'd have had to, if you'd have had a van, it would have been hard, much less a car. Yeah. I had to go butt first, literally bend forward out of our chair and literally scoot on my butt backwards to the back to lift my leg up because you can't bend it when you're in that brace. That's right. Okay? That's right. So thank God for Cheryl going for me, helping me. Because like I said, I didn't know how to get an Uber. I didn't, know, I didn't have the app downloaded, nothing. So like I said, she did that for me. She you know, was there when the doctor said exactly what was wrong with me and all that stuff. So I'm thankful for Cheryl. Well, we can get back to, okay, so Heather had called again. Debbie's in the background. This time, that's when I was scooting on my butt to get in the back seat of the car because I had to keep my leg. I still can't talk. And she's like, the minute she can, she will call you. So now keep in mind, they had been calling. She, Heather was calling because of Debbie for about an hour, hour and a half max, okay? Because this is going to lead up to, to what happened. So I had inconvenienced Debbie, who had been out drinking, drinking and gambling. First of all, they already had another room, okay? They told them that at the desk when they went in the car didn't work. And Cheryl had told, them, or told Heather to relay that, that nobody's bothered stuff. They can come and get it as soon as I get back. Okay. So anyway, but like I said, I hadn't seen them since general session was over. I did my thing with the Z. As soon as Cheryl had me check, we went straight to the hospital. But because I had inconvenienced Debbie Rowe, who was lit, she was drunk as drunk can get. Okay. Because you could. So anyway, as soon as I get back to the hospital or to the hotel, we go to the desk and the lady was still there. I said, okay. I'm ready to go back up and I'm in the brace and all that. Heather doesn't know anything because I haven't been able to talk to her to tell her what happened and stuff. So I was like, I know this is going to be bad because I could hear Heather or not Heather. I could hear Debbie acting a fool in the background. So I said, oh, you might want to bring one more than one security because this is going to be ugly. And Cheryl was like, so I ended up, I think there was two, three security. And actually one of them was a woman. There was ended up being, I think, three security people that came with us. Okay. So three security, Cheryl and me. So we get in the elevator and we go up. And as soon as the elevator opens, straight ahead is Debbie Rowe and Heather. And she is staring me down and looking at me. And if looks could kill, I would be dead. All right. So I close my eyes and I just suck it up and I drive my scooter to the outside of the door i give care uh the key the key to security actually to open the door she starts going off youth did it start with an f you effing you fucking ungrateful bitch you yeah, you, you're the ungrateful bitch. Just because you're now medically compromised and needs a I, room and some privacy. Because she pushed me because she did it out of her kind heart to oh, run me in at, at the intermission to push me into three people. I'm a fucking ungrateful bitch. I can't right that's now. That's the only time you're going to hear me. Yes. <clears throat> at this time, I am holding on to my steering wheel because my blood and my adrenaline are pumping and I'm about to come out of that sucker. But I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, Lisa, that leg, you cannot do this. Keep still. I look at the security. They're all staring at me. In the meantime, she's still cussing. Heather don't know what to do. She's slamming everything in the every uh, closet door, every door. I mean, just cussing nonstop after that. And I was like, no, you're the bitch. And I was like, you pushed me into three different people. You're the bitch. And I was just like, I grabbed a hold of that scooter. I'm like, Jesus, come on. She basically tried to taunt me like she wanted to fight me with me being in a scooter and my leg like it was. That's how dirty she is. Well, it's the only way she could have beat you. Huh? It's probably the only way she could have beat you. (laughs) (laughs) What do they say? A Southern woman's only, only, uh, only unavailable to kill somebody when her nails are dry or wet nails or what i don't know i just messed that whole thing up but yeah oh i got messages sent to me after that too when i was healed i said and and, and i'm not normally not this one but so what hold on i'll tell you that part because it, it, it gets real interesting on that too so here i am and i'm sitting because i knew i couldn't defend myself i could barely stand up in that knee brace and then my i'm really glad that. that the security was there with you hopefully they got they, her out of the room 
they looked at me after she was gone and they were like, I'm glad we were all three here. So yes. even after she didn't, I did say, no, you're the bitch. And you pushed. So the Heather was able to hear a little bit about what truly happened, but she had flown in with Debbie and all that. I mean, Heather could have stayed, but imagine she's totally shocked with this whole situation either. Cause she's only listening to the crap right. that Debbie Rowe is feeding her. Right. Right. So, Oh, she finds out her true colors after that. But anyway, so they get her stuff. I go in my room and I was just like, and they're like, wow, you were right. And I'm glad that we came up to do that. I said, I knew it was going to be that way. I could tell by the way she you talked to me. So, I'm so glad you were not so disabled with pain that you actually understood the danger you were in. Because imagine if you had not had the forethought. I couldn't even. You'd have been hurt worse because I can tell you she would have probably shoved you or something horrible. She does not sound like a nice person. She's not. She's not. And so, get this, so listen to this part. So in the meantime, whether they are put out about an hour, hour and a half max, okay? But I couldn't help that. Had they come to the room when I was going to the Z pieces, I could have told Heather, I'm going to the hospital. You're welcome to stay, but she needs to go. Which I'm kind of glad I didn't see Debbie Rowe then because honestly... She would have started something in that room and it wouldn't have she been She would have. I'm very glad you didn't too. You right. you had some good gut instincts. I'm glad for you. Right. So it was a ble it was a blessing that 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 it worked out the way that it is. And again, I'm so sorry that I inconvenienced her for about an hour, hour and a half max, okay? She was blitz. I mean, she was drunk. She'd been gambling and she was uh, because I am convenience. Now they could have sat in their room until I called and said, okay, I was going to say, if she needed to use like the facility, she could have gone to her right, other room, rested room. and relayed. The only thing she didn't have was her suitcase. Is that correct? Right. Cause what's the first, wasn't thing even unpacked. Did she even have to pack a suitcase to leave? They ain't got on one pack because as soon as they got there, they pretty much, or she did, started running around and doing stuff. That's so, what no. I'm saying. All she really had to do was pick up an, all, a suitcase and roll her ass out of the room. Is that right. correct? She may have, they may have had like some of their, uh, you know, like makeup. Toiletries stuff. and stuff. Yeah. 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 That's about what it was. And maybe have hung something in the closet in a bag. Like, you know how you can get garments in the bags? I'm not really, but I mean, yeah. Everything was being slammed, and the whole time she's in there, she says what she says, and I'm like, "No, you're the ungrateful." You know, you pushed me into three people, and she never shuts up the whole time she's in there. And as she comes out when she's leaving, I'm just sitting there, and she's looking at me like, and I'm like, "Are you crazy?" I'm not, and I'm thinking to myself, "You are not going to even give her the time of day right now, because a, I'm hurt, and I'm not going to get hurt any worse." Okay, so listen to this. So Rochelle Beachy, you know, when I got hurt. She didn't even offer to go with the hospital to the hospital with me on Sunday night. Um, but she'll be praying for me. Oh, well, and that she, that helped a whole lot. I mean, just right. saying. So then when Debbie Rowe was the only the only the only reason why you're alive today is because Rochelle Beachy prayed for you. I just want to. But you know, if Rochelle Beachy is the only prayers I'm gonna get in this lifetime, I don't want them. The, I don't want them. I'm not sure who she's praying to. Amen. That's the okay. question. And, and I'm going to share with you what her religion was and what I think. I don't know what her religion is now, but I'm going to share that. In just I think it's here. called the Almighty Dollar. Oh, dollar, yeah, dollar. That bill. and the paparazzi religion. Yeah. That's what it's got to be. So, okay. So now after Debbie, in the meantime of waiting, she's called Rochelle. She's called everybody. And Lori Volkerich, if you're watching, I want you to hear this part. Okay. Because she showed, they had a meeting or something, and she shows up, Debbie Rowe does, and she is cussing me, calling me everything but a white girl. I mean, that's just an expression. Calling me everything but, and telling this only God knows story on me, and I know that because it got back to me. And so Lori Volkerich is talking about me. She doesn't even know me, okay? And again, there are two sides to every story, right? And then there's screenshots. So anyway, um, on the number six, so again, Lori, I'm sure you're going to watch this. Shame on you. Shame on you for the for the opinion that you formed on me without even knowing me or the situation. Just the talk that Debbie Rowe had should have opened your eyes to mm -hmm. realize if she's cussing and acting like this, maybe mm -hmm. there is another side to this story. Mm -hmm. But no, I was judged and get this. Whenever the phone call was made, I was dumped. Rochelle Beachy would no longer look my way. Merle, if I passed them, I couldn't sit with the trainee or nothing. Everybody, the whole team just dropped me. Wow. Rochelle B. Merle, whenever I turned their heads the other way, like I didn't exist. Thank God I had other papa sisters and I didn't want to bring about the drama to tell everything in bits and pieces. You know, it was heartbreaking. 
but I was going to, you know what I'm saying? So this is Tuesday and this is, yeah, after she made that phone call and told them that, that I had their stuff, whatever she said. Okay. I was disowned except from Lori and her husband and a few of them, but I was going to sit in that group. I, I mean, I'm not going to go near Debbie Road because like I said, there was too much animosity after being cussed out like that and ran into three people. I didn't want to be around her. Okay. So, so, so they basically were pissed off at you because you made that fucking bitch. Sorry. Sorry. You made the no, fucking okay. bitch get her own room after she did what she did to you. And and all of them just think it's why because you just you you're a princess and you all of a sudden just there the, none of them thought that there had to have been a reason why I mean you threw you're her not at, at you're room. not at the hospital or anything you don't walk in with a huge ass brace and a and a sling and medication that maybe you just need some privacy so you can feel better anybody else would have said you know what we're gonna get a different room we're gonna leave you let us know what you need we're not there. why would they shun you. Yeah, I'm so, so these confused. Ladies, but anyway, I'll show you that, and then I'll show you some bruises and stuff too. So yeah, first of all, when she showed up around Rochelle and Lori Volkerich and all them cussing like you know, like she was, and with the trap. Not, I mean, I don't have a problem with cussing, but the way she talked down to me and yeah. just going off the drama and stuff, I would have been like, but no, they didn't ask any questions. They be totally believed her, and I was the outcast. Okay, so. I'm How sitting, dare you? Yeah. So now I'm in the scooter, right? And I've got this long brace. Well, the brace was cut me. And I, I did yeah. wear it like for until about Wednesday night or Thursday because it was where the scooter yep. that I sat in and the brace met, it was cutting into my leg and That's I was common. actually bruised yeah. from it. That's okay? common. Yeah. So I still kept in the end when I was bruising from it, I ended up taking it off, but I kept my leg straight Great. out. Uh -huh. Never bent it. Right, right. So anyway, um, so I go to the hospital, you know, everything. I get the medicine and I get the x-rays and he's like, you know, um, I don't want you, but obviously you can't use crutches. Stay off it as much as you can. I know you got to go to the bathroom and that. You can't do that in a scooter. And I'm like, trust me, I'm not doing any more than I have to. Um, and so anyway, the medicine was able to take the edge off of it, but I'm never going to take more than one pain pill a day. Unless, I mean, even before I had a plate and three screws put in my neck, the most I ever took then, and it took me 10 years to find a surgeon that wouldn't paralyze me. Even then during that time, it was once in a blue moon that I ever took two. Mainly it was one, enough to get me to where I could do what I needed to do to function as a mother, right? Right. Until I could find a surgeon that wouldn't paralyze me. So anyway, we get the scooter, we get Debbie Roll out, she's cussed me out, she's told Rochelle, God only knows what, and Lloyd Volkerich and the rest of the team, but Lori and her husband knew it was crap. What happened to me was crap too. They knew the true story. But I'm like, it's fine. So anyway, now I'm in the scooter. General, and when I went back to general sessions, it's it's a free for all. There's no, if you're in a scooter or if you're in your no. wheelchair, you don't get open doors before that, no. You're going to wait your turn, which I wasn't trying to cut anybody. I don't have a problem with waiting my due time. Oh, right? you know, you threw yourself in front of that semi so you could get in the door first, sit at the front row and throw confetti. You know you did. I do that look, for Disneyland. Let, let, let me tell you the second part, too. And then looking back, honestly, I had the biggest, I could have sued the crap out of the hard rock. Yes. For putting me in a wheelchair yes. I should have never been with. Okay, yes. and been in that got me hurt and got me dumped because of the hole in their pavement where the where this uh, sidewalk ends. Okay, and then dropping the ball on getting me my scooter in time before I get rammed into three people thanks to Debbie Rowe. Okay, so oh, and then it gets worse too. So anyway, Wednesday happens. I'm in the scooter. I go back. I go back to commission. We end up going to the hospital right that night, and the doctor takes care of me. And then Wednesday comes along. Okay. By this time, the picture I had showed you of the other girls that were around me in the wheelchairs and stuff, I had met them and they were talking about how, you know, they were discriminated against. There's no place for us. There's no letting them in. It's a free for all. You're going to wait in that zigzag line. And I'm like, you know, whatever. I even had another lady in a, in a thing that I think is, I don't want to say it. I'm not going to even say that because I can't prove it. But this other lady that was in a wheelchair almost ran me over in my scooter because she wasn't. So some of them probably were abusing. I mean, going full throttle with scooters and running over people's ankles. And that wasn't me. I went bare minimum. I wasn't trying to get ahead of anybody or, 
by all means, you know what I'm saying? I waited my time, but I mean, it would have been so much easier. Even if you let us in before people on the Z, put us in a line with the handicap. Right. And Correct. then let so many non-handicapped people go, and then let the ha- line of the handicapped people go. I, wasn't I mean, trying let's, to be, let's, let's, let's be real here. They have had multiple large-scale events. This is not the first time that they have been challenged with having people with differing abilities need to get in a room, and they make zero accommodation for that at any point and have right. not in ever in years and if you complain you know what happens if you complain you're not grateful or you get canceled you get if canceled you too much of a stink because remember in their cause they can fire you for anything at any time and not give you a reason and but there ain't crap you can do about it we do have another um hearing impaired consultant that's going to tell her story and she was literally canceled because she kept on complaining about the lack of the the um sign language sign language interpreters yeah so that's coming yes if you complain too much because you're not grateful they will cancel you yes right. right okay so wednesday comes along it's general session time okay now in this scooter you have where the arm arm rails go up and they should stay up in the upright position. So mine were in the upright position. So you guys did stay at the hard rock, correct? Yes. So you know how heavy those doors are yes. it going in and into the room. So imagine me, I'm by myself, okay? I'm in that scooter. I'm opening the door because I have to get in the scooter to give it gas to get out that door. Well, guess what happens? The armrest falls down on my arm, my left arm, okay? And the door to the hotel slams on it. Oh, Jesus. You talk about this is, like a, of- this is like a Tom and Jerry cartoon, only real life. This is horrible. Horrible. It's like, did I have a black cloud hanging against me? I know you don't reap what you sow because I have never mistreated people for crap like this to be happening to me. It was like I was in this movie or watching a movie on TV that I was watching this stuff happen, but I couldn't put, push a pause button. I couldn't stop it from happening. This is it terrible. Like, this is, was this horrible. is horrible. Yeah, this is just horrible. So, and I'll show you this is so the door comes down because of their broken armrest, okay, on the scooter. And I filmed all this too, to show where the right one stays up like it should, but the left one comes crashing down. Now this is Wednesday, okay? I've done been to the hospital Tuesday night, seen the doctor. So this is Wednesday. Now I'm gonna show you different angles of mine and you're still not even gonna see the worst part kids. It was under and I'm not a contortionist. I can only turn my elbows so much. Okay. Can you see this? Oh my God, Lisa. Oh, that's just the start. The wor- it gets worse. Um, Let me go to another one. That's my arm was horrible. It could have had, um, I'm opposite you all. So you can kind of see the worst person was dead. underneath too. Okay. And this is my arm after a few days. It was, I'm trying to get, so I'm trying to show you a screenshot of all the different angles, but you're still not going to see the whole complete other part. And that deep purple bruising that you say at the very bottom underneath, uh-huh. keep that in mind because I'm going to show you what I could show you of my legs when I was dumped halfway in the highway and halfway in the parking lot, okay? Remember, I had a case of water on me, okay? Now, I am in the bathtub, and I'm not going to take a picture of my hoo hey. <laughs> Even though I wanted to show how purple it truly was, I am not going to take a picture of that. So, this is this is a screenshot, and I'm trying to oh, see that. Lisa. Of all the bruises, okay? Lisa. That That's is That's just part horrible. of all the different bruises where I was dumped halfway in the road, halfway in the parking lot, okay? Now, underneath where your hoo is part is the one that's the big, as purple as you can get. You have bruises where it's the purple and the pink, and it's that. Yeah, I didn't take a picture of that. You're lucky you didn't have a blood clot, Terrible. We'll get this. That's and very that dangerous. Arm, I, I, I'm not even doing the arm. Correct. Um, and, I mean, there's more. There's more on the other leg. And then you can kind of, I'm sorry, there's a front. You can see how swollen that leg is. That's the left one. That's and there's so bruising bad. on top of it. But I took what pictures I could just from, like, this way. And there's so many more. So, again, like I said, the one that was really bad. Because, I mean, imagine 24 pack of water. Because I knew I was going to need it. And I didn't want to ask for help more than what I had to. Or even at all. 
all of that landed on me and hit that part of me when I took that fall. I got in a motorcycle accident and rolled my 900 pound Indian motorcycle over me over and over again. And I don't even remember looking that bad. So I know how painful it is to have that type of bruising. It, I, it was horrifically, I was so sore. So I can't, it like gives me goosebumps because that so, is and, so and bad. That was uh, the, the bruising that was like by my hoo on the bottom part of my leg. Mind you, I'm dealing with that, that leg brace. I'm having oh to sit on a God. bruising that's about that big around the deepest purple you've ever seen. Those pictures aren't nothing compared to what I went through. So we're on Wednesday, right? The door comes crashing down and you saw some of it, but I couldn't take the other picture of all the way around. So I'm like, my, the two friends that I met, Lisa and Friar, is like, Lisa, you're going to the hospital. Because actually it happened and I didn't even tell them. But they knew something was wrong because I kept holding my arm. It hurt so bad. So my knees throbbing, my ankles hurting, and this arm was beyond it. It looked even worse because, Matt, those pictures are like almost a week old. So anyway, um, finally, they're like, Lisa, something's up. What's going on? And I move my arm out of the sling, and they look at my arm, and they're like, you're going to the emergency room. And I started crying, and I'm like, no, no, no. I've already been there, you know, because they knew they, that what had happened the night before. And I'm like, I can't go back. And they're like... So there was a guy, actually, because we were watching all the girls that got ready to go to the gay leg gal or whatever you call it. They're all coming in and we're just watching because I, I wasn't really interested in going. We were just people watching because how am I going to get a dress with what I was in and all that and, and walk or do any life? And I actually should have walked the stage because back then, if you were life of the party, silver above or was it gold above, you walked the stage. So 2017, I, I never get to yeah. walk the stage, which, okay. I wasn't hugely disappointed about that. So, um, so Wednesday happens and, and then they're all, we're watching them all that are dressed up for the gay, like, cause you're going to see them all decked out to just plain black and white pants or, or a dress. Okay. Nothing fancy. So we're watching and they're like, so Fran and Lisa know this guy and they have him come look at me and he was actually a paramedic. And because of the way the bruising and there was a knot on there, he said to me, and that's what really started to scare me. He said that you could have a, a, a hematoma in your, what mm -hmm. you just said, right, mm -hmm. bingo. Mm -hmm. So that put the fear, I was like, mm -hmm. okay, Lisa, Fran, I'm going to go. And they're like, we're going with you. And I'm like, what? I knew I wouldn't go to myself, but I wasn't going to ask both of them because they're in scooters, right? Lisa had burnt her feet at the convention before at the other place. Oh, it's a nightmare. So anyway, yeah. So I was like, you guys, I'll just find somebody or I'll ask you something like, no, we're going. So I actually um, end up going and I get the same doctor again. And he was like, bless your heart. And I'm like, I said the same thing. I feel like I'm stuck in a movie that I'm watching and I can't push pause and I can't stop what's happening. So they x-ray it and everything. And of course it's not broke. Um, and they look for it and I definitely, Oh, I have knots. I have blood in there that's gathered in and nodding. Just like when you hit your head, if you hit it hard enough, when I was passing out and ended up finding I had a blood clot, I had hematomas in my head. Thank God they never tried, you know, the blood clots didn't travel anywhere. So yeah. And then he's like, definitely keep it in the sling. We got to ice it. We got to go. All and thanks to Fran and Lisa, I was able to get the ice and stuff and be able to keep it on like I should have and everything. So, yeah. So then I, I'm not only am I hurt the first time in a wheelchair I shouldn't be in. I'm cussed out, being called this and that. I'm totally dropped by the team and ignored. Thank God there were other Papa sisters, paparazzi consultants that were there for me. Okay. So I tried to put the bad stuff behind and just have somewhat of a decent the remainder of the trip. Because like I said, it was just, it's like, what else can happen? And I prayed and I prayed too, because whenever I would pass Debbie Rowe and Heather, she would always mumble something, Debbie would, under her breath. Like she was trying to, what's the word? And to, uh, and to get me to, mm -hmm. what's the word? They antagonize. To, yeah, mm -hmm. and to get, to get me to jump out that wheelchair and fight her or something. Well, when it was all said and done, I sent a message through Heather that anytime she wanted to rumble and I was healed, I'd meet her in the street in front of her house any day and time. But I'm not going, I've never been to jail with anybody and I don't ever plan on going to jail. But if she wants to rumble, I'm healed, I'll meet her in the street in front of her thing and I'll even let her throw the first punch. That's how angry I was. 
that's how angry I was. So anyway, but I am not trash like she is. And I thank God that I got, you know, so I, I'm in the hospital twice. So again, I'm totally, except for Lori and that, um, ignored by my whole team. I don't exist. But thank God other paparazzi consultants kind of took me under their wing. And I didn't want to talk about all the drama and that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not like that. It, it, and the drama that does happen with paparazzi, if somebody is jealous of you, you got a target on your back, right? 100%. I wasn't no. Ranking up. Mm. I just wanted to sell and do, yeah, you know, you both know that one. Right. I mean, and just like, okay, so anyway, um, I'm in the hospital Wednesday. I'm totally ignored. I think by Friday, when convention was over, actually Thursday, but people stayed till Friday, some left Friday, some left Saturday. I think one time we were walking in the hallway of the down by the casino and that, and the one time she had the Rochelle Beach, she tried to say hi, and I just looked at her. Like, are you kidding me? Right. The rest of the week, every time she looked my way, she would turn her head. Her and Merle both. Okay. Both of them. She and sounds you know? delightful. And so the person that cussed me out, ran me into three person, people, is the same one that, that Tracy just read the screenshot of that she would like to quote unquote throat punch that bitch. Okay. Leah, Leah, they targeted her. Okay. Because Debbie didn't like her. She was a nurse. She ended up losing her husband to cancer and they never let up on her and they got her fired. I know who you're talking about now. Right. Wow. So the screenshot that Tracy read before, so I could let give everybody an idea of the person that we're dealing with. Wow. And it wasn't the thing, just why you, would she I make like up this that? Story? That was the point of that. If anyone was wondering. That this was not just exclusive treatment for Lisa, that she was upset with Lisa. This is how this human, Debbie, reacts to um, apparently a ton of different people. Right. It's not deadline. just Lisa specific. That was the point of that screenshot. Yeah. Right. And how about the you know, other was on Tea Time too. Remember talking about how she um, reported Debbie because she cussed out consultants and they reached yeah. out to Heather. And that's when in Rochelle Beachy, I hope you're watching this. Okay. How dare you say to Heather Rowe, you have sold your soul to the devil. Because she the told Rochelle Heather Beach, Dill she'd sold her soul to the devil. Yeah, because mm -hmm. Rochelle, because Heather mm -hmm. reported Debbie Rowe after mm -hmm. the consultants were coming to her saying, You gotta do something. We're being cussed out by Debbie. Re remember when Heather was talking about that and she literally cried to her dad because she was I freaked think, out and her dad say, said I think uh, yeah, oh yeah, I remember now. Yeah, but Heather saying, was in tears. Yeah, I when think Rochelle that I like that, just it was all so bad. It's like you hear yes. it, but then you're like, yes, yes. Okay. So this is what I have to say to that. Cause the moment I heard that my heart just was like, no, she did not say that to you. So this is what, cause Rosha, I'm sure you'll watch this. This is what I have to say to you. I met you in 2016. You were a Mennonite. Okay. And that's the religion. That, and I am not mocking this religion. Okay. I'm explaining to you the kind of things that they do. The little like Jewish people, they wear that little, you know, that the men wear the little piece on the back of their head, Jewish, right? They wear that and the boys too. Well, with Mennonite, there is this like Rochelle would wear, it was like a crochet piece that she used to wear to represent her religion on the back of her hair. Okay. Bobby Pandan. That's the Rochelle I knew up until I went, I kind of like disappeared. So Mennonites, they wear the hair piece in the back. Okay. Okay. I never saw Rochelle Beachy in anything but a long skirt or a long dress. Okay. Because that's against the Mennonite religion. Okay. And like okay, I said, okay. by no means, please do not misconstrue this if you're watching this. I am not knocking anyone's religion. I'm just telling you what each religion how they represent themselves. And so also, they generally dress in a certain way to kind of indicate their religious right, beliefs. So it's like, like one. when Jewish gentlemen wear a yarmulke, like right. it's just a, an indication of their particular religious faith. Correct. Okay. So it's the hair piece and you wear long skirts, long dresses, no pants, no piercings, nothing like that. Okay. Now, Rochelle Beachy wears jeans, pants. I see pictures she's never wearing the hairpiece anymore that represents the Mennonite religion. Okay. And she's has piercing, her ears pierce. Okay. So I have this to say to you, Rochelle Beachy. 
how dare you say to, to Heather Dill, you've sold your soul to the devil? Because it sounds to me like, and it shows by your actions, and your actions speak louder than your words, that if anybody has sold their soul to the devil, it is you. You, just an outsider looking in, appear, appear to have totally walked away from the religion you were in in 2016, 2017, okay? Did you trade your Mennonite religion in for the paparazzi religion, whatever that may be? Oh, so we know what that ever, is. Right. So don't you ever, ever say that to somebody. How dare you? Mm -hmm. How dare you? Mm -hmm. Shame on you. Correct. Correct. I think that one of the most disturbing parts of the stories that people have come on and shared with us is how something that is a business has been twisted so much to be a religious prop. Like they use a religion yep. as a prop to intimidate, to threaten, to incentivize, to bribe, to scare to basically it well it's cult behavior you all and I know you hear us say this a lot but if we if we go over and we are going to have a, yeah. at some point an explanation of you know what is typical cult behavior and how does it compare we have an expert that we're working on a good date to come in and explain to us somebody that's a, an expert on cults um this is a way to have people basically emotionally manipulated into participating in a business in a way that they would not have if that if that particular tactic had not been brought into it. Mm -hmm. That, you know, people do tend to want to socialize, do business with, befriend people they have something in common with. So they're using a religious faith as a tool to build a relationship with folks, but then they take that tool, they find the parts of it that might influence people more than just their profit and loss statement. And then mm -hmm. they, 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 they just manipulate them and claw away at them until they're worried that their religious faith is somehow going to be damaged if they don't participate in the business in a certain way. And it's gross. It is gross. Okay. It's just gross and emotionally manipulative and disgusting. It's right. disgusting. So now let, let's go back to when I was hurt and she didn't offer, wouldn't go to the, to the emergency room with me, but yet she's going to pray for me. This was Sunday night. Okay. But Tuesday, when I finally end up going to the hospital and all that, and Debbie says, whatever she says to me, she's going to pray for me, but then I'm totally ignored. I don't exist because shame on me for inconvenient, inconvenience and Debbie Rowe for an hour and a half. What kind of prayer did she pray for me? What kind of religion right. was she doing then? Correct. You're going to pray for me, but then you totally two days later, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, act like I don't even exist. That's I'm really thought. sorry. I'm just really sorry that that was your personal experience. I just find it even more, just all these stories just make it more and more disturbing. And I thank you for coming on and sharing it because I know that that was painful for you. And if people are wondering why Lisa wanted to tell her story, I believe it's because she wanted everyone to understand there is a long standing mm -hmm. history of paparazzi accessories not doing anything to accommodate people who need help because of medical challenges at their events. Right. But it also was to show that even though people are supposed to be held to a certain code of conduct in their quote unquote policies and procedures that uplines are allowed to treat people on their teams absolutely horribly and when that attention is brought to compliance for their consideration nothing happens because correct me if i'm wrong but debbie Rowe is still an active paparazzi consultant is that correct imagine that after that text being brought out when heather was on okay when heather dill was on and the phone call well, she's even talking bad about paparazzi and she's Correct. still a consultant. Correct. Oh, and I do have one thing I want to say, okay? This is to Misty Kirby, because I'm sure if you're not watching now, you build, will be watching. Hey, girl! Hey, girl, hey! Love your guts! 
when 2020 was, so I did go to convention 2017 and I did go 2018, but then I was done. I kind of like disappeared. Okay. I did do the virtual for 2020 and during Misty Kirby's speech, talking, training. Okay. It will never indoctrination. Leave my mind. Indoctrination. Right. Yeah. But do you know her exact words verbatim were, hold on, I'm on, I do not like mistakes. I do not like mistakes. Okay, well, I'm sorry. So anyway, I want to say this to you. Mistakes is what we learn from, right? Everybody's going to make a mistake. But here's the thing, whether you learn from that mistake and you don't make it over and over and over again, you learn from it, right? So Misty Kirby, since you don't like mistakes, since pretty much the whole time I've been in it and when I stopped, the last live I did, I sold 500 pieces by myself in four hours and um, shipping, this is when shipping was, I got it, when I get, a, and, and, and don't get this wrong, I was blessed enough that I did not run up credit card bills, okay? I had one that I would use that had a very low limit, but most of my, all of the rest of my jewelry is paid for by my debit card or my husband's, okay? Now, am I sitting on a lot of jewelry? Yes, I am. But you know what? That's okay. Because I know who my God is, right? And I pray, and I know that he's got my back. If I need to donate this stuff to the, to whatever I need to do, I'm going to be okay, I'm going to thrive, you know, because the why did I continue to buy? And I didn't buy a lot, but I did continue to buy some of the really hot pieces until they got untouchable because I got to the point I couldn't get anything because I wasn't up in life of the party or up in rank. And Jerry I and Tracy, I have tried it all. I have done where I've made everybody get off the internet here. Nobody's on it but me. I've got it to a T where I can be in my pieces and out in six seconds and still every single item I hear dropped ya. out of my cart. I hear you. But yet I did an experiment. I watched, well, let me forget, let me finish this. So Misty Kirby doesn't like mistakes, but yet her company and her shipping department continue to make them time and time and time again. They still can't get it right. When I get a credit card statement on what little bit I did before I received my jewelry, I didn't even get a chance to sell that jewelry that I could have probably paid that credit card in full had I had my jewelry before that statement was, was due. Am I wrong people? Right. No. And so my question is too, and I will be looking into this is how do they get away with that? Correct. And I'm going to leave you guys with the food for thought on that because, and, and I am not saying this is true. I'm just trying to ponder how they do. Okay. Because I know, when I, or, when I did order new releases, it goes, cause I go to my checking account and I look, and when you first order it, it goes to processing. And within 24 hours, it's no longer processing. It is pulled out of your checking account and money Correct. is in their hand. Okay. Correct. Okay. And they can sit and not have the jewelry to you over 30 days. And even now it's 26 or 26 to 30 before it gets to you. Okay. They have two different shipping buildings now. Two different, remember the one shipping area and they open up the second one? And mind you, Utah never shut down for the COVID. You guys know that, nope. right? They never shut down. Now, maybe paparazzi didn't want to hire more people and have benefits, but that's what you get temps for, right? They were, you go through a temp agency, you pay them an hourly wage, the temp agency get some, those employees go, and they can be temporary. So I said to my husband one day, I said, why won't they just stop doing new releases for like a day or a week so they can get caught up? And he was like, um, because that would cost them money. And why should they? Because everybody still buys. Correct. And lets it go on for the time, right? So what about those consultants that didn't have the means to wait that long? So they ran up their credit cards. They weren't so far in debt. Okay. And, and that's all another story. But to Misty Kirby, how dare you say you can't stand mistakes yet you continue to make them daily with your company? There is no excuse because, with, okay, and this is my thought on it. Maybe, maybe they're getting enough of the pieces to show to take pictures in the back office. But maybe that jewelry isn't arriving from China in time now. So they're selling us pieces that may not have even made it to their company yet. Well, 
Um, the girl. That, that's my thought. I'm not saying right. that's true. I'm just trying to yeah, figure out. That why. was on last week was saying that she could go and pick her pieces up in person. Oh, I'm sorry. She wasn't on tea time. She was in the group. She had done her Maya. She had done her story. She was saying that one of her advantages that she had had in her business when she was working is that she lived close to corporate. She would place her order for pickup and then she would just go get it in a couple days. So I don't think that they're not. So the pieces are there. So, but why can't they get it to everybody else? Because so, they just don't have enough people packing. But they're just not in a hurry because they have your money. They have no incentive. Right. And this is a question I would like to ask just to the audience at large. I would love for anybody that works in the financial services industry or in the retail industry to tell us what um, regulations surround taking payment for a product and not delivering that product over the internet. Because I believe there are regulations in place that if you do not deliver an item, at least your payment processor, like uh, not uh, like even it won't PayPal. Be in your bank account, pull it out, right? To what? PayPal items been used shipped. to say that if you um, take the money, you have to deliver the item within a certain period of time. So I'm I'm curious to see like Amazon doesn't take money out of my account my pay my PayPal account for purchases until the shipping label's been put on it's out the door. Um, so I know that things are different with different processors, but I would like to know what the actual regulations are surrounding taking payment for a product and not delivering it. That's what I would like to know. Right, and, and me too. Say, yeah, I would like to know. Um, I am actually, yeah. we have a business. Legitimately, I'd like to know. We have some attorneys here because we actually had a commercial property. And get this, we had an attorney who decided, an attorney, she put a law firm in our commercial business and decided to break her lease. She thought she was above the law. <laughs> what did I do? Hired me a business attorney, took her to our, we didn't even go to court, went to arbitration and we won. I beat an attorney. That goes, she was dirty. She still Listen, stole girl, some money from us, but. Just because they went to law school doesn't mean they're all smart. I right. went to She's law school with some chaser. people that I just was shocked past the bar. And that's the truth. But I don't right. know anything though, because I'm not a real attorney, right? I forgot that. Sorry, my bad. Uh, though I, so for a fact, they do not uh, release the pieces um, on new releases until it's already sitting in their warehouse. That's, That's what I would think. Because now looking back at the big, they always try to keep what, at well, least a three-month supply. Yeah. So it must be they're not hiring enough help. And so I'm going to tell you. It. Yes. They'll so take more money, but we still have to suffer after, it, or, or wait for the story after all these years. Because so, I would go, I would go pick up my jewelry daily. I did a, I, I rented a house in Utah for a little bit. And, because I was thinking about moving to Utah. Thank you, Lord in heaven. I didn't do that. Good. But, God, really? Thank yeah. God for unanswered prayers. Okay, I okay, had really? I had rented a house in Utah for six months and just to see if I liked it. And I would pick up my pieces from corporate. And then every weekend I would drive back to California and I would go back and forth. Um, but the problem is that, yeah, they don't have enough workers. And we do have. This from a company that makes how much in revenue? It was correct and improved and they can't correct. hire enough workers. And we do have, for a fact, we know that there were workers who did have COVID um, during the COVID pandemic and right before convention, to include right before convention. And when these people got sick, they didn't bring in more workers. So it was, they were, they're completely backed up with shipping and they don't care. They like, and when they were still backed up with shipping, remember that one special where they did new releases even on the weekends, right? So they ran new releases seven days a week. Shipping. And that is even more backed up. Co correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. And speaking of those who can pick up at will call, Taylor Kirby. Okay. Yep. I've watched, I sit back this three years, I've just sat back and watched different ones to see, yep. to see if, if the high ups are getting the same releases every day versus, cause I'm trying to figure out what the magic trick is. So my plan was to come back live again, um, to sell what I had and, and but was I going to stay with it? No. Okay. Um, cause it wasn't for me. Number one, I don't kiss anybody's butt. If me doing my job isn't good enough, then I'm not going to do it. And Jerry, you weren't invited to anything because you didn't drink the Misty Kirby Kool-Aid. Okay. <laughs> no, if I wasn't invited pictures, to anything. A picture speak, a picture speak a thousand words. Look at the pictures. Correct. Patty, Patty she drinks the Kool-Aid. She kisses the butt. Correct. 
the other ones, and I'm not going to say that because I don't want to trigger anybody to maybe harm themselves because that's not at all what I'm about or what we're about. But I'm going to close and say this right here. I am simply sharing what happens, okay? Some of you have been through so much more. Some of you are watching this that are still with the company. We are not begging you to quit. We are here. I'm here. And I know Tracy and Jerry and Carolyn out of the goodness of their hearts, okay? To share, to reach the ones that are bringing that. They're coming to them. You understand that? We're coming to these Correct. guys saying, hey, this happened to me. Can we talk about it? Can we share it? Because maybe if they're like me, me sharing that God awful experience, my goal and the whole thing is, is I'm going to be able to now it's out there it's off my chest. I'm going to be able to release that and I'm going to be move on. I'm not bitter. I'm not angry now, you know, and I'm going to start. I've already got stuff. I've been buying stuff for a while. I'm going to do an online boutique, an online boutique and I'm also not going you. to rely on because now I'm starting all over again, y'all. So anybody out there that is worried, here's the thing. You don't, if you're thinking about it, I'm not begging you to stop. I'm just going to say this to you or recommend this to you. First of all, pray about it. Okay. Pray about it. Listen to what's being said. Pray about it. But realize this. Paparazzi is basically like a wholesaler to us. But when they step in, and that's one of the reasons why I quit too, is like, how am I going to do clothing and paparazzi too without getting fired? Because you can't. So you I cannot. was trying to figure out, do I you go live to, on with Paparazzi? You have to be husband? special. You have to be a special right. someone in order oh, to do that. Oh, you mean like Erica Cole? Erica Cole yes. who wears the blingy outfits and then she sends yes. them all to her husband? But yes. you see, Erica Cole is untouchable. And let her send me a cease and dismiss because when I'm state is the truth, the whole Correct. truth, and nothing but the truth. Okay? Correct. She sends, I see her outfits, and she sends them. Not that she's not making enough anyway, okay? If that's not greedy, I don't know what the hell is. If that's not cross-selling, cross whatever, I don't know what the hell is. And I will okay. say hell. Okay? okay? But I want to say this to you. If the thought has crossed your mind, you are not happy. And this is one thing I can say. Never once was I ever talked to the way that Danielle Baker and other elite have talked to their done line. Because you know what I would have done? Had Heather, she was my um, the first step of the elite in the Rochelle. I said to Heather, I said, Heather, if I would have ever talked to you, if you would have ever said to me this, the things that are coming about about these other elite that say that they're her teams, what would I have said to you? And she said, you would have cut. I said, no, I don't cuss anybody. She said, no, I'm joking. I said, I literally would have looked at you and said, did you just fall and bump your head and hit your head really hard? Are you feeling okay? Because you're not. talking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Heather was not like that. The texts that are out there where Daniel Baker is telling a girl not to take her medicine when she needs to. That if you're well, in a how hospital, dare you bed, take your night nighttime medicine on a routine you're if you're not shot. finished with your challenge from the founder? Have we have we shown that yet? Uh, we no. were going to save that for a special tea time. I don't but know if we this, were saving it for a special tea time well, so much as it just so didn't come up in conversation. No, we haven't. Yeah. Yeah. No, so we haven't. We haven't. We haven't brought it up yet. I don't know if uh, Tracy has it uh, handy. Or Caroline, she's the master of the receipts. I don't know. Oh, I got but, them. I can send them straight to you. Yeah. No, no, no. no, 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 no. <laughs> I just figured since you brought it up and people out there say we don't show receipts, we should show that receipt and read it. Um, it is disgusting. It is absolutely disgusting. Right. Uh, I am so sorry. And, I totally and with didn't. that said, so we're, we'll get into this is, you know, there's um, uh, Karma Chameleon had released a video of the one time I absolutely cussed out specific person on my team. Uh, so when anybody wants to come back to me, how dare Jerry sit there and feel so angelic? No, I'm going to tell you, I was the same person then Absolutely. in paparazzi as I am today. And when I know that there is a low, disgusting, vile piece of shit who was acting that way, I'm going to call your ass out which is exactly what I did to Ramey Grimm and the videos out there. And I'm so glad the videos out there. I was bummed that karma chameleon took it down. I had heard that karma chameleon, which Holy is Patty. Mary's like, I can't believe my tirade was removed. Someone I know. Said that to me. So Patty, Patty took it down as karma chameleon. And now she sent it to her best friend, which is Colleen. She's a piece of shit. And, um, she, Colleen reposted it, which I thank you for that because it proves that I have always been the same person and I'm going to call a spade a motherfucking spade. Right. And I went off. 
on Rainy Grimm, who is a two-faced piece of shit. And I went off on Hunter, who was a fucking piece of, is a right. piece of shit. And at that time, his significant other, who was Andrew. And everything they were involved in was disgusting and vile. And I brought it to the entire team because I had had enough. And I kicked her the fuck out. And yes, it was right after I received Empire. And I'm glad that that's out there because you guys can see I am the same person as I was then, not kissing anybody's ass and calling a motherfucker a motherfucker, just like I am going to today. Same person. Right. So ask them where the screenshots of you talking to your team, begging them or telling them you need to order, order, order. I don't care if you're about to lose your house or you've Correct. got credit cards and sezzle and this and that Correct. down the streets. You need to order. Correct. Show me a receipt of that. They can't. Nope. Okay, you guys, remember when I asked if anybody knew about the shipping times? Miss Lisa Baldwin, you were on a girl. Miss Lisa sent me this. It says, the 30-day rule for shipping goods. If you don't make a statement regarding shipping time, you must ship within 30 days. Wow. That's the 30-day rule. It begins when the business receives a completed order in payment. So they have 30 days. Okay. But they went over that because- Oh yeah, multiple gotta... times, multiple times. I'm saying they have 30, I mean, the the, the so findlaw.com okay. quote here says, unless you state otherwise, you have 30 days. Okay. But then in their thing, it says, well, it'll your order be processed in 72 hours. However, they say we're experiencing a delay, but they don't put in that disclaimer that, oh, it may take three weeks, 21 days to process your order before it actually well, ships. What's what's really bullshit is they say that once they've processed the order, no changes or cancellations can be made. So why do you think they're rushing to process your order? Right. So uh, my question is, whenever they do go over 30 days, Shouldn't it be your right as a consumer, cancel. which is what you are, to cancel that order because you don't want it six weeks after the fact, but paparazzi won't let you do that. Nope. What they tell you, you have to wait till you get it. And then if you send it back, there's what, the restock fee and all that for jewelry you haven't even opened or touched. But Correct. I'm wondering, because this is not an area of law that I'm familiar with, um, I'm wondering if. Well, if you start a cause of action with them in any way, shape, or form, they'll cancel you. We know that, right? Right. Uh, but if you're, if you really are someone who has a bunch of products that are that you've paid for and haven't received, and you do, and you quit, um, you can do a chargeback. Your bank with your bank account or your credit card company can do a chargeback for you for products that you have not received. So even if they refuse to give you a refund your payment processor, your bank, or your credit card can charge back against them. So you are not without recourse if you haven't received your products. Um, but that being said, you will then, I'm sure, get canceled by paparazzi because you've challenged their structure of, of operations and they don't like that because they don't make mistakes, do they? I don't like, right. I don't like mistakes. Right. And oh, ladies, by the way, I'm going to send you a screenshot. It was in Power Me Pink this year, okay? And it is Misty Kirby throwing a freaking tantrum, and I can send it so you can show it on the next slide that it is in a screenshot because I have it. It was when, remember, in Power Me Pink sold out like that? Jerry and you guys were already out, but this past in Power Me Pink that was virtual, that sold out, but they decided, okay, we're going to open up some more seats. But it was the same price, $35.00 as the ones who are going to get, you know, the 10 exclusive pieces, right. the, the little purse or backpack that you get for going. So no, I was there still. To, they decided to open up. Oh yeah. You were still, that's right. They decided to open up some more. So more people could watch them virtually. Okay. But you had to pay the $35 and with it, you didn't get anything other than you got to see what was going to come out in the right. uh, help me the spring line. Correct. Right. So a girl, how dare her, goes on paparazzi accessories and i will send you the receipt on it mm -hmm. so she says she's like i just don't understand why we have to pay the 35 dollars you know when we're just watching we're not and i understand we can't get anything but is there a way you could think about lowering it right do you remember what i'm talking about miss oh i know exactly what misty said yeah i do you have the screenshot because if not i'm going to send it i, I have it i have I to have dig it, it. Okay. right she threw a key her last bit. word Oh, crazy. And, and this is from somebody that's the owner of the company, a founder. Her last words were, and I quote, because I'll never forget it. If you want to fire somebody, fire me. You're fired. 
Where's Donald Trump when we need him? You're fired. No, but I'm here's fired. the thing. You're fired. You need to check on that consultant to see if she was still a consultant, but she did, you can't find out any information. I am going to actually message her and reach out to her to see if she actually is a consultant anymore. Because my but, guess would be and, how dare and, her say anything. And during, during that, off. correct. During that rant, Misty Kirby also said that how dare you devalue our trainings? How dare you not find any value in what we have to say? How dare you not find any of this valuable beyond what you would get as a perk? How dare you? So this is my question, Misty Kirby. If all of that is so valuable, why are you not training the people in paparazzi for free? Why are you not offering everybody in paparazzi training so that way it could be a better company you what we only can hear the gifted by we're so gifted to have you in our presence we have to pay for it is that what you're saying that's if it's that valuable you would be offering this to people for free to build your business and line your motherfucking pocket misty kirby kiss the ring baby kiss the ring it's right. all bullshit. Right. I mean, what kind of founder put something that that on there? I mean, she looked like a little kid throwing a rant at the end. If you want to fire somebody, fire me. She I was got this pissed off. She felt like she's taken advantage of and people don't appreciate her. So anything that falls out of that fake ass lying motherfucking mouth, we're supposed to fall to our knees and praise because she is all that. And yeah, because if you don't and you get turned in compliance, you got a target on your back. Correct. And whoever's turning you in or having Correct. somebody else turn you in so Correct. that it won't look like you have a personal conflict with this person, just like Heather. Heather had a target on her back. When she was turned in in the end of, July, end of June, beginning of July, and then exactly five weeks later, and then again, after she resigns, what happens? She gets that cease and dismiss on the the child's bracelets that she listed on september the 28th somebody was watching her on that and so that's the only screenshot they can give us because she posted it as of september 28th after she had quit that's all they had on her and that okay, was a so scare tactic it is now that's a tactic that they do on everybody so paparazzi a little literally has right. people hired that do nothing but same they they send the same generic letter as soon as you either quit or you're canceled so anybody who leaves paparazzi voluntarily or involuntarily you're going to get a cease and desist letter so please don't freak out okay what i know what's funny though it's a scare tactic the cease and desist letter that i got talking about i wasn't allowed to use their stock photos addressed another consultant's Correct. another former consultant's business they're so lazy and send them out so frequently they didn't even address my business page they told me to right. cease and desist using their photos on somebody else's business page I'm jesus like, take the will if kidding. i was gonna if i was a bitch which i am i would have written back but i was like why would i spend a 30 seconds even 30 seconds of my time trying to fix your broken shit right dumb but, ass so this is a reason why i want to talk about this though is because Paparazzi has been very successful until now by bullying people to just shut the hell up. You're not allowed to sell our jewelry. You're not allowed to use our pictures. You, and by the way, it's your fucking jewelry now because you purchased it, okay? Right. And wait a minute, can I ask you this real quick before I forget? Aren't you entitled to those pictures that you downloaded when you paid for that jewelry while you were no. a consultant? No. No? Okay. It's their intellectual property. They own it. Okay. But let so me tell you we did, what I we... do. Okay. I have a piece of foam core board from the Dollar Tree and a cell phone. I hold the jewelry up, click with my cell right. phone and post it because cell phone pictures are just as good as their pictures. Right. It doesn't even At take any time. At least you can actually see if you're going to be ordering an earring that's actually you think is this big and it comes and you get it and it's that big. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, you, you really are not allowed to use their photos because they're so, so what valuable. What they do to you That's if you so did? Valuable. Well, and that is a copyright violation, and that is okay. a federal crime, and there are actually uh, per offense uh, fees, and it could be anything up to like two thousand dollars a photo. So you really, need, like you said, we don't yeah. need their pictures. You don't. Alone. It's so easy to take your own photo. Like, why would you even care? Okay. Seriously. Right. There's a couple things I want to bring up. Number one, paparazzi 
has used other people's stock photos of the jewelry that isn't even theirs. No. -uh. no. You mean the ones that we can find on Nihaho jewelry and yes. Express and no, number two. Okay, go ahead. This is important. I'm this is I'm talking about this for a reason. Everybody out there is not everybody, sorry, 95% of you, because the other percentage is on here talking is so afraid to speak up because you get a cease and desist letter that is standard for everybody and you feel like paparazzi has your balls in a sling, okay? I'm telling you, they have been very successful with this. It's not that all of a sudden just Tracy and Geraldine have their panties in a wide because we're the only ones who who are pissed off on the injustice is so bad that nothing's going to shut us the hell up. The fact is, I don't give a shit. And I'm pissed. And everybody else is scared to death to say anything because it is a scare tactic with paparazzi. And they've been very successful with their scare tactics. And it's not just paparazzi. It is their high-end leaders. their Erica Coles. their Taylor Kirby's. Oh all God. of these people who say all these, oh, if you quit, you can't sell the jewelry. If you quit, you're sitting on all that jewelry and you can't sell it. If you quit, you can't use their pictures. If you quit, if you quit, if you, and they literally preach this down the line to instill the fear. And it is very real. And the bullying is very real. And by Tracy started it before me because she was on one for a, a year before I was on a tear, right? Right, and I watched her. And, and I watched her. I Correct. respect you for what you by starting it I, and not. I watched up her videos. Shutting up. And then now, as soon as I left, uh, you, nobody shuts me up for anything. You know, I I have a big fucking mouth. Fuck you, Rainy right. Grim. So I said that before. I'll say it again. I'll keep on saying the f you to the fake motherfuckers out there in paparazzi. I said it when I was in paparazzi, and I'm You'll sure I'm not going to say it now. Let me tell you something. Nobody's gonna be able to shut the fuck up. I'm sorry, Eric. Right. Cole, and you're gonna Hunter. still what? You're still gonna share those stories and let people talk that are coming to you. You're not seeking them. This I is why. Them. This is why this is so important, you guys. Because paparazzi has always been very successful on scaring people and shutting them up. Your uplines have been very successful in brainwashing people without hearing. You have never heard anything else. When I was in paparazzi, the first thing I've ever heard ever disparaging about paparazzi was when Tracy left. And she was the first one who truly took right. a stance and started talking. Woo! Okay. Number one, finally beat Jerry to something. You Yay! did beat me to that. You did beat me to that. Girl, you and know I'm teasing you because I love you. I, I know, you but I'm trying love. to make a serious point. And, and I don't get, usually I don't get super serious, but people need to freaking hear this. They don't want you listening to anything else besides what they have to say, because that is a tactic in brainwashing. It's information control. Absolutely. But it's we're the, the eye and the bite model. About we're the a trashy, pissed off consultants that got fired and we're the bad people and we're so not. Even yep. if you catch these videos and you're going to hear if you comment on the videos, you're going to be canceled. And that's true. But you can watch this video without saying an, one word, without typing anything. You can watch this video and just listen. You can watch all the videos on YouTube. You don't have to even do it while it's live streaming. Go to my YouTube channel. Go to Tracy's YouTube channel and watch all of them. Nobody knows you're watching. Just refrain from typing anything, whether it's good or bad. Because even if you type something that you think you're calling Even us Even if you say hi, you're done. And, and it looks like you are gone. And that is a fact because Misty, for a fact, has put people in corporate to do nothing but read these and cancel people. Type it's not names even- and see if they pop up as a consultant, boom, you're done. It's not even consultants turning consultants in anymore. That's right. This is coming straight from the company instead of packing your shit and shipping it she has other people spending time doing nothing but watching these videos and canceling anybody that types anything who is a consultant. Yeah, because I guarantee you they didn't she, hire anybody new. They just made somebody else do correct. the work. Yeah. Because she does she is the epitome of mind control. 
you are not allowed to say anything disparaging about her precious fucking company. Can I say something? And do you this know, too, if you, ta- if you tag paparazzi hashtag on anything now, you go look, they now have somebody watching hashtags and anything that's derogatory Correct. or bad about their company, it's gone. Correct. It is gone. Because when we would hashtag paparazzi accessories or the founders, Correct. it is no longer there if you go look. As soon as you're putting it there, they've got somebody watching 24-7 taking so it down. think about how much time this takes. Think about how many hours she pays somebody to do this to try to keep her company out of bad light because she needs to control everything positive about this company. She knows she's a piece of shit. She knows that what this company does is shitty, but it's about lining their pockets. Your elites who are making all this money and uh, for a fact, Elites now who are making all that money have told me how they are stressed and their hair is falling out and they don't believe in what the founders are doing anymore. Uh, But they're still recruiting like crazy and lining their pockets. And I have screenshots for that. Monica Cox, you're amazing out there. You're just busting your ass. You're busting your ass in this culty cult cult that you couldn't stand. And you're recruiting people like crazy. These people are the epitome of money hungry, greedy pieces of shits. And until you start listening to anything else but what your upline and what the founders are feeding you, that is false. You are never going to make an informed decision about what you should do with your future in this company. And it's not because I'm bitter. I am so, I wake up every day so relieved that I am not a part of paparazzi anymore. There is more than what you're going through. And there is a lot more truth than what they're forcing you to only listen to. And also people, if you're out there and you're even considering, think about this, Tracy and Jerry and Caroline are, are simply letting people come on and speak their truth and everything has receipts to it. Okay. If it's said on this show, like anything that I've said, I've got receipts. And again, I'm going to send you the one because I brought up the thing about the Empower Me Pink. And, and going back to Empower Me Pink, they could do a Empower Me Pink virtual, correct? Okay. Why wouldn't they even consider that on, on convention again this year? Because Knowing, it doesn't make them money. Because right, virtuals right, because don't they, make them money. Like in my quitting letter. Because it's going to cost you money. Or Correct. money, you weren't going to, you were going to lose money. But yet the uh, life of the party trip diamond and above that was going to cost you. We're going to have to fly the consultants there, do their room, pay for their meals and give them their shopping cards. You canceled that for COVID the following month. You canceled the, the, the vacations that member you can earn for free, but you couldn't cancel Correct. the convention. Correct. Because I have a feeling that when they booked artists to perform, that they couldn't get the money back if the event was canceled. Okay, but why couldn't they have filmed that and let the people no, that bought no, no, the convention No, 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 I'm not disputing it. I'm saying right. they needed to make the money they make when you buy in person because they get you worked into a frenzy. Yes. It isn't as exciting to see it on the screen as it is to see right. it in person. in person. Right. So they can't adequately they, they're brainwash They're not going to make as much money on a virtual event. I would Correct. be surprised if a virtual event made as much money. No, I would be surprised. There's no way because yeah. they can't sell their merch the same way when you walk. Right, the right. You're right. The, the, the boutique stuff that you can only Correct. get at. That's, that's there's like the there's the FOMO. The FOMO is not there. You're not in a crowd of people who are standing four hours in line to purchase a stupid broken fucking Z piece. Right. All that is not in your face. Right. Not and to then, mention the kickbacks they get from hotels for correct. selling out room blocks. Correct. Right. Correct. Absolutely. So, you know, I, uh, I uh, honestly, I'll have to tell you this one show, and I think it's because of kind of where my mindset is right now, too, because I almost canceled on this, this show because I just had so much going on here, and I feel like I need a mental break a little bit. But I'm not going anywhere. Don't freak out. I'm not going anywhere. Missy's like, ever, yes, we broke the say, base. If no, anybody ever it. wants to do it and they can't do it on a Tuesday and that's why you don't reach out to us. We can film on different days at different times. We can. Um, we have, please don't worry about that. If you all are, if, right. if anybody wants to reach out, you certainly can. You can. Um, we. It doesn't just have to be on Tuesday, but um, Christy Tester wants to come on, and she is the lady who's going to talk about how 
she had such a terrible time trying to get deaf interpreters because she is hearing impaired. Um, but she was working during, she's working still right now. She wasn't off work and couldn't come on. So we're going to accommodate her at a different time. Yes. Um, because we're not paparazzi. Isn't that shocking that the rest of the world will accommodate people? I don't know. Um, we don't just do it on Tuesday. So if anybody else has a, and I look, if anybody else has a story and they want to tell um, something you want to talk about, something you want to hear from us, if there's topics that you're really concerned about and something that we haven't brought up yet, please just send us a message because we are trying to get out as much information as we can to help people make a good decision about whether or not they want to remain a paparazzi independent consultant, because honestly, they're supposed to be your wholesaler but they really overstep into so many other aspects of your life. And you have to be the one that chooses each individual has to be the one that chooses whether or not that's okay with you. Right. Yeah. And this story, uh, Lisa, thank you so much because this I'm, I'm telling you, I'm so sorry. That in was the beginning horrible. of this, I was, I was, I was fighting tears. And I, like I said, I was already in kind of a strange mental state of a bunch of shit going on. Um, not personal. My life's great. I'm, I, this is all just, you know, third, third world issues. I got too many construction workers and shit going on, right. but I'm mentally drained, right? You, your story that it hurts, that hurts. Yeah. That hurts. That's, and what's really sad is you guys, this is more often than not the selfish, disgusting, um, manipulation that goes on with your uplines and quite frankly, if it's not making them money. And I used to say this all the time. My slogan was, if it's not making me money, I'm not doing it. I never meant it literal. Like I was going to leave somebody in the side of the street to get ran over by a semi because I'm afraid to crack my fucking crown on my head and help them up. Are you fucking kidding me? I'm talking about all the other bullshit that takes place with paparazzi consultants posting and cyber bullying people. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. That don't make you money. But when it comes to human behavior, these elites, zero, there's zero there. They don't care about you. Paparazzi founders don't care no. about you. Rochelle I mean, it starts at the top. It's the doesn't down care effect. about you. Yeah. She wants to go live. I love the last live. I saw Rochelle Beachy. Come in. Damn. Rochelle Beachy wants to talk to you. Rochelle Beachy needs to pray for you. Rochelle Beachy loves you. Do you think that maybe she's been taken over by something and that she's now got to speak to herself in the third person? I don't I know. I was waiting I for somebody video, else to come like, in. You know I what? thought Rochelle Nothing Beachy seems... was going to come in. Like, well, who the fuck does what? this? Like, are you her twin? Is Are we being punked? Like, what is this? <laughs> but again, you know what? Nothing that I've seen or seen that video would surprise me because of what I've seen, what happened to me with convention. Because I knew then exactly what she was all about. Correct. And I, no. And again, like I said, 2018, and just so you know, Tracy, in 2018, the two ladies that I met in 2017, when they had the Rachel Platinum concert, were you guys in on 2018? Yes. yes. Okay. Do you know where they, for the concerts, where the handicapped were made to sit? Up in the very top. Yes. Where they have the spotlights on you. Yes, yes. ma'am. Because I have two friends that were stuck up there. And do you know how left. I know that? Because that was the year we walked for Z. Yes. So we were Z consultants that year. Yes. Gary and I won. Marissa Carrig's husband was in a wheelchair and he couldn't even see her walk Correct. for Z because he was way up in the top mm -hmm. and he couldn't even see. She was in tears. She was very upset by that. Um but that was we did know that they were way up at the top. Now that you brought that, that up, sad? it reminds like, where me. Where the lights? They were burning up too, because the spotlights they were right next to those, and those suckers put out heat. Correct. But I know for a fact that year, the say is is there's Kelly Say's and and Christy Sappington, and they're they're high level pieces of shits. Um, they claimed disabilities, and they were literally put in the front of the concert. They were put in the front of the concert. So it blows my mind on who they choose to do what. Right. They were punished and put up in this nosebleed it, it, and by the light spotlights if you had a disability. Crazy. And, Crazy. And, Karen, and, and Trace, I want to say to you, when I heard your story the other day about what happened to Caroline, where she was pushing and that like that, I was just like shaking my mouth like, what else is going to, and I am so sorry that she had to go through that. I had that I, no, 
I it, just it's like it. what you said. It just is one of those crazy things that, that okay. no one, if there hadn't been other people there, I'm sure that we would have been dismissed. But more than one consultant actually wrote their own statement and sent Thank it goodness. in and copied me on it. Yeah. But you were still dismissed. You were still oh, dismissed. I was dismissed, but I'm saying they can't deny that it happened Correct. because I I had other witness statements. It wasn't just my word. It was because my word's apparently never enough. It has to be like three people and a and a you know three people and a crow have to witness it all. Okay, but what, what it out. Yeah, but what doesn't make sense is other paparazzi consultants can make something fake up about you, turn it into compliance. They suspend you without question, and then the, the, most of the time leads to cancellation, even if you're innocent. So. How does that pan out? Oh, I guess if it's the founder's brother who actually also does okay. the crime, then it really didn't happen even if it's captured on camera. Oh, I well, see. Really all was. he did was stop me from getting security to get the other woman in time for anything to be done about it. He st stepped in and, you know, said, you need to stop this. What are you doing? And then we couldn't get past anybody because the crowd was so thick. He didn't actually do anything besides stop us being able to get to security. But it, it turns out that even the security had no power to do anything anyway because nothing was going to be done. So I guess his part of the story is redundant. I think the only reason I mentioned it was because that's the first time I had any contact with him. And I was like, wow, what an asshole. Because what... You completely misinterpreted the situation and you're stopping me from getting to, uh, do, you, do you have kids? Like if someone came for your child, like you want to rip their throat out. Mama bear mo kicks in. Whoa. Which is what And I brought I... my daughter, not to the first one, but the second one. And yeah. I want to hear something funny and I, and I can post the screenshots to prove it. My daughter took a picture with Ryan and then she wanted Misty Kirby. Okay. And this is funny because this one I was pretty much knew I was done, but I just hung out. Anyway, my daughter was dressed in jewelry, bracelets, necklace, and not, not a piece of it was paparazzi jewelry. <laughs> she had to take a picture and smile with my daughter knowing. And if looks could, oh my gosh. So it's like, yeah, I had her in a big blingy thing that paparazzi couldn't even make for that price. Earrings like she didn't have a stitch of paparazzi jewelry on that year, period. And Misty had to smile, grin, and bear it and take a picture with her. Well, I just, wow. That, that what Misty Kirby has to go through daily never ceases to astound it must me. Be that must have been incredibly stressful. Yeah. Having to pose for pictures all day long. So, and one thing I want to leave with the ladies out here that, that have, that have a story to tell too, that's probably could be worse than anything I could ever picture of going through. If you're scared, because my husband said to me, what are you going to do with all this jewelry? And I said the same thing I was going to do it. The only thing that has changed here is that I can't order from the back office. But guess what? I've done my research and I know where I can get pieces for a dollar and two dollars at the most. And I'm not pocketing. I'm not patting somebody's pocketbook. OK, so nothing's changed. Other again, I can't order from the back office. So if that's if your personality your customers are with you for a reason. If you can offer them jewelry that's of a value for the money, okay, and comparable to the pricing, you know, some's going to be a little bit more, right? If you can still offer them that value for the money, they're going to stick with you. If you stop selling the paparazzi, one, if you've got a bunch, sell it, bring in the new stuff with it to get, you know, if you've showed it all, you know, bring in some new and then throw in what paparazzi you've got left. They're going to watch you because they like you and they do want jewelry for the value. So if you're, I'm not begging you, I'm just putting this out here. Stop and think, okay, and know. And there's a group that will help you out too. I reach out and I comment in this group and I tell them, I am here for you. If there's anything I can do to help you, reach out to me. You know, this doesn't end, that we have no strings attached here. When you are in paparazzi and once you quit or once you didn't go live or whatever, all the friends you thought you had, they're gone. That's, that's the okay. other thing. Thank They're you gone. for saying that. Absolutely. All these, we love you. It's a sisterhood. Rochelle Beachy loves you. The only time right. they love you is when you're putting money in their pocket. Right. If you stop ordering, if you stop ordering, if you say, I'm not going to order anymore, I'm just weeding this through, they're going to beg you to stay. And then after you leave, they'll say, well, I don't understand why you left. Well, okay. And then they're going to delete you from all their groups and they're going to they block you and you're done. You're now the That's enemy. That's what happened. Oh, oh, that too. You're now the enemy. I was deleted out of the group for no reason whatsoever. 
I don't know if it's because she was pissed I wasn't ordering what I was ordering. Still to this day. And, you know, I reached out to her with no drama, wanting to know what I did. She blocked me on everything, would never answer my question. I wasn't trying to find drama. I simply wanted to know what I did to get removed from that group. She never responded, blocked me from everything. I mean, so. It's it's paparazzi or nothing. And they, that's what a cult mentality does. It's right. paparazzi or exactly nothing. Right. And, and that's the other thing is they do that on purpose to instill the fear. If you do this, all your friends are gone. If you do this, all the relationships you built that are fake, by the way, but and they, don't know and they do yet, go. They're gone. They're gone. We're, we're, we, we, we can't be family if you leave paparazzi, right? This is another fear tactic that they do to keep people in the company. It's disgusting. It's disgusting. And now you guys and the people that come out are saying to them, we're just putting out there our truths and everything can be backed up and proven. Okay. And there's a group that will help you with no strings attached. There's not paparazzi being held over our head. We're going to be there for you and help you through this, whether it's helping you find vendors that you can get the jewelry from, yep. you know, yep. whatever it needs to be done. And we're doing it out of the kindness of our heart, not to get patted on the back, but because we want people to be able to, that, that really need this, right. That need the income that are, they stay because they're scared. They can't go without that. Well, here's the thing. There's the only thing that's going to change if you do decide it's not for you anymore is that you're just not going to be buying the jewelry from them anymore. That's and you're it. not going to be, and you're not going to be and talking gonna... to your team mates your uplines and those right. teams because they will take you out and if right. that is your entire life then i suggest you stay right because you're gonna you find will, out who your true friends are you you, you will have a breakup with. you will have many many breakups but many. let me give you let me give you something positive to think about as well right that all will happen the group we started is called recovering paparazzi consultants if you're out of pop and happy about it it's a private group for, for troll but, reasons, but Tracy, right? do, after you say what you say, do tell how we're being targeted in that group. But go ahead. Okay, I will. I was going to say, there are one that right this minute, 1,462 members. I started this group the end of September. Mm-hmm. It's not even, it's been a, maybe a month. And, a half. and 100 of them are probably spies and trolls. That's okay. <laughs> but what I wanted to say is, there are 1,462 people in a group. Is everybody friends with every human? No, but are they friendly? Yes, they are. Is there a whole file section in there where everybody's been incredibly generous with their vendors? Like, here's where I buy clothes. Here's where I buy shoes. Here's where I buy accessories. You guys like hats? I got candles. I got purses. I got backpacks. Whatever cosmetics, whatever people have worked with into their new businesses, they're sharing their experiences with vendors. There's people in there who have MBAs that are helping people talk about setting up a business. There's people that are tax experienced and they're talking about taxes. People that are bookkeepers talking about keeping books. People that are designing websites, helping people with that. People that are helping people design logos. Whatever you think you need to start a business on your own, they're in there doing it and helping each other. Nobody's in competition because we all try to help each other succeed. Now, funnily enough, that group is constantly being reported. Um, I get notified probably once a day that Facebook has had some complaint made against this group, made against this group, made against this group. Somebody's comments been targeted. There's there's trolls. There always are trolls. The thing is, my my nothing's been done. Because we haven't done anything wrong. Now, I would like to tell you that there are people in there that if you join and are not an ex-consultant, there are trolls in there who will probably report you for being in the group. But this is what I have to say to that. If you're thinking about going in for information purposes and you're not an ex-consultant, we're probably going to tell you, no, you can't come in because we've had too much drama. We're not having drama. If you, if you want to explain to us why you'd like to take a look around, you can talk to us. But if you don't answer the questions, we're not letting you in either. Um, but it's called Recovering Paparazzi Consultants. And can I if say you're this out of quick? paparazzi and happy about it. If, if somebody even thinks about talking ugly in that group, what happens? Uh, they get deleted immediately and they get banned from the there. group because we're not here for that, you guys. We are not here for that. With that being said, though, you have to, again, we have 1,400 people in there. And we have probably a hundred moles, right? Mm -hmm. So number one, we cannot, we have a lot of admins and I'll tell you the amount of times I look at that page is probably 
20 seconds a day. Okay. I have, have other time. shit to do. Right. Right. We are not there to babysit a large playground of adults. And so it cracks me up when something goes astray in there and they're like, well, I can't believe it. Beep, 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 beep. This is the one thing that pisses me off. Why aren't you doing this? And why aren't you doing that? It is not a group where you've left paparazzi and all you did was bitch about how your upline didn't pull up your panties. Okay. It was not going to happen. Wipe your behind first. Correct. Clean you up, powder your butt like a baby. The information you need can be there if you look for it. Right. But nobody is there. The stories, the greatest thing about it is you can play a video or listen to somebody's story and not feel alone anymore. That's but right. If you're looking for a group of people who is going to single handedly make you successful. And I used to say this in paparazzi all the time. It's not going to happen. There are resources there, but you're going to have to do the work. OK. And I'm being very honest if you think i'm going to join this group because that way it's just going to be so much easier for me to get into my new venture it's not easy going into a new venture is not easy but if you're not making any money with paparazzi and all you're doing is losing money and you're being bullied and you're being treated like shit, what are you doing like that doesn't it just makes zero sense to me well because one day i'm going to be a rochelle beachy and one day I'm going to be a Geraldine. Who like would want to be that way? One day, right? I'm telling you, you don't. No, you don't even want to be the Geraldine that Geraldine was when she was in paparazzi. Trust because you me. had a target on your back. You the whole don't time. want it. It is miserable. It is, there is no amount of money that you're going to make a month unless you are a piece of shit. And I can name a whole bunch of them. Hunter is one big, huge pile of steam and piece of shit. If you have that in you, that you have no morals, no ethics, and no regard to other people whatsoever, this is not the place for you. Now, if that's you, if you're a steaming piece of shit and you like to pray about things that aren't real and you want to throat punch somebody and then pray about it, if you're one of those people, then you should stay in paparazzi because you have found a really good home. You do you, boo. You do you. Like, girl, stay. Not like, go, girl, go. It's like, stay, girl, stay. Seriously. Stay, girl, like, stay. Because you found a home. Stay, girl, stay. Yeah. I don't have anything to hide. So I don't have a problem posting things in the group or speaking to Me neither. people. If you're uncomfortable and you don't want yourself to be out of, don't join the group. Because there's people Correct. in there every day screenshotting the membership page to see who's in it. Yeah. It's. I don't care, really. People are like, we should stop the group and start all over. No. It's going to start again. Not going to do it. Because sure. I am not interested in, and in the opinion of trolls. What is it? The mermaids do not concern themselves with the problems of shrimp. So I keep the page open. We do have multiple people moderating posts to make sure posts are not defamatory or hurtful or... You know, people have a lot of hurt feelings and sometimes yes. they expl explain their feelings in a way that offends others. We try to, you know, work that stuff out. But I will say that most of the time, I think the most beautiful part of the group for me has been seeing somebody tell their story and then perfect strangers commenting underneath. Yes. Thank you. That is how I felt. And I didn't know anyone else felt that way. Or Correct. thank you. I had the same thing happen and no one would have believed me if I told them my upline never believed me or everybody said, just be positive. It was so frustrating. Thank you for having the same feelings I did and telling other people about it so we can all make each other feel better together. That Correct. has been the most beautiful part of it. I am so Correct. proud Absolutely. of that group. Correct. As you both and, should be. And there is a lot of silent readers and watchers who won't say anything because they are afraid that somebody is going to come after them I get because it. the bullying is real. If you think and it's it, still helping you're them. right. It's still helping them because at least they can read it and now they don't feel alone anymore. But we are very transparent. We got trolls coming in there. They literally take a screenshot of all the member lists and then they go harass people, even if you're not saying anything. So if you don't want to uh, be a part of that or and, and I'm very passionate. I'm yeah. very passionate. We're not and I said there this. for looky-loos, like, or people and who I, haven't left I said left this in yet. the group yeah. the other day. Look it. 
If you're bummed because somebody just went on your new business live show and said, oh, we're going to troll you because you're anti-paparazzi, and then you're going to come into the group and boohoo how hard your life is right now, I am going to have to say something about it. And I'm going to say, look, this is not for you then. If you are pissed off because someone took a screenshot that you're a member of this group and now you feel like you got one troll and your life is over with, this is not the group for you. Because I'm yeah. there, no make no mistake about it. This is a war. You thought that paparazzi would sit idly silent while we came after their people who are literally brainwashing all of the other people who are losing money by the thousands of dollars to line their pocket that they would sit idly by and listen to us completely tell the truth on how disgusting they are. You thought that they were just going to sit back and let me and Tracy run our mouth with no recourse. Is that what you thought? That's not going to happen. You will continually see posts about me and Tracy. You, and, and I actually haven't even read half of them. You know why the same people who associate with those people aren't even in my group of people who follow me. Right? I mean, it makes no sense. I don't care. I don't care. So if you want to join that group and you think it's all going to be sunshine and rainbows and unicorn farts, then I'm just giving you a very reality, big, huge reality check. You're going to hear hurts. You're going to hear frustrations. You're going to hear heartbreaking stories. You're going to, you're going to want to cry. And if it's going to trigger something and you expect us to to uh, just sprinkle sunshine and rainbows and give you jazz hands and act like Patty Shevlin, that everything is good and God is great. That's not what's going to happen in that group. And this is not going to stop. But if you want to talk about how crap oh, they wanted to was, stop, they want you, you sure guys can to go away, to go away. But Correct. You're not. And thank God, thank goodness you're not. And nope. the people and the consultants are still coming forward. And guess what? They're not going to stop. Every day in that group, too, for the ones that hadn't quit yet. Every day, are you not saying, I just gave my notice? I'm Correct. Free. Correct. And like, what does everybody say? The side, if you they need say, it, we're here. Congratulations, congratulations, you're free. Congratulations, congratulations. you're free. Yep. Never, I'm sorry you had to do that. Congratulations, you're free. Not thank you for taking my advice because I tell everybody you've got to make your own choice. If you it do. doesn't make any difference what we say, if you don't believe it and it doesn't resonate with you, then then you're fine. But I'm saying if you can hear all the truths and you're still there, this is not the group for you. It's not. This is called recovering paparazzi consultants. It's not for current consultants. If you want to looky loo while you make your mind up, it's not going to do you any good. Make your mind up. And if you choose to leave, we're there for you because you got 5,000 groups that are going to blow rainbows up your ass every day. Right. But don't you dare have a bad day and post about it. Don't you dare right. do that. Don't you dare. And you have now Tracy's YouTube and my YouTube with all the tea times yeah. at your, at, at your disposure where you could look at all that. But if you're pissed off because you're a paparazzi consultant and you want to be in the group and you've been removed, I don't know what to tell you. You know what I'm saying? Like we got way too much going on and people are starting to get really tense in there Ooh, and uh, they're not there as soon as you quit or you leave. And we're not saying that you have to quit to be, you know, <laughs> part of the in club, but it's too much. It's just we're not a it's club. too much. We're it's not a support group. It's a Correct. business support group with friendship support group. It's a recovery support group. Correct. It is an MLM nightmare support group. It is Correct. not right. And remember, it is, it's yeah. going to get nasty. Now it's already getting nasty because you guys aren't going away and you're allowing people to share their truths. And it's hurting those elites' pocketbooks. And it so is. they're pulling. I mean, somebody that uses a child as a pawn. I mean, and I there's. You just don't do that. That's why I made that disclaimer. If you have a child in the room or even my daughter, she's nowhere near because there's going to be adult language. Because it's going to get salty. This, right? It's going to get yeah. salty. Right. So, I mean. It's going to get I, salty. I just can't. I can't. I know. <laughs> I know. Anyway, I hear you, So, girl. again. That's a whole nother tea time because we're going to cover it. Right. You know, for all of you who tuned yeah. in today and you were no, waiting for, honestly, though, but it's, it's coming. It's a, it's a process. The development of this group's a process. The things that are happening in the group is a process. Things change all the time. Um, 
But what I what never does stop in that group, things change all the time. But what doesn't stop is the support, the genuine friendships that people are creating, the kindness that's shown to strangers, people you've never met in your life that you're sharing your heart with, your information with, your support with. Even if you just give somebody's post a heart and say, I know what you mean. Seriously, sometimes how much does that do for you in a day when you've had a really crappy day and you don't have anybody around you to say something to like, can you believe this happened? And somebody's like, girl, I know. Isn't right. that shitty? And you're like, yes, I just want one other human being in this world to say, I understand what you're talking about. Cause you can never say anything bad in a paparazzi group. You haven't, you, you're out of jewelry because every, cause you've gotten a box in six weeks. You don't have any money available to buy new. No, nothing's coming in the mail still. Your box got pushed again. You you keep disappointing your customers. Everybody's leaving. Saying. You can't say it. And somebody's like, girl, my box didn't come either. You're like, we don't talk about shipping today. What? No. I, I can't with that. We're real. Just like I was never that parent whose kid was the smartest, bestest, fastest potty training, cried all, never cried, and slept all night. I'm like, mm. that kid got up five times. I'm going to. Oh my God, if it wasn't so cute, I'd kill it. You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I, I had, so this is a funny, the, the pay, the stories, you can never have a bad day. Your kid is never, your kid's never bad, never does anything horrible. You know, your house is always clean and your food's always delicious and you certainly don't have chin air, right? Like Kudos to them, right? If there is such a thing that exists. Yeah. I just, that is not this group. This group is full of real people who've been filled real land mine fields with this business and have gotten through it. And some of them will never go into business again. They just want to talk about I their know. experience. Some of them are building whole new different businesses. They just want to talk about their experience. It's a good group. Agreed. Yes. Recovering paparazzi consultants. I think somebody posted it in this in the comments. Um, you again, do have to answer the questions. Answer, if you don't answer all the questions, we don't even. If answer. you forgot your consultant ID, I, I, say I, that. I, Say that. Say I yeah. forgot my consultant I mean, ID. Give us other information. Whatever. Yeah, like, depends on how bad you want in there and what you're gonna say. I don't know what to tell you. Like, I just say it's it's not meant to be a quiz. You pass or fail. It's meant to show that because everybody gets checked. They put the consultant IDs in and make sure that they're inactive. Correct. Because we're sick of trolls. But that I forgot. I forgot my consultant ID and Car Caroline had to tell. I me will never it. forget mine. I don't think I'll ever forget I, I forgot it. it again. Caroline's like, Jerry, here it was. And I'm like, and I'm sure all those people who, who typed me into compliance a gazillion billion times memorized my consultant ID as well. But I forgot. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Can I, can I say one thing too? Cause I had totally forgot to say this, but Heather is the one that had a target on her back. Okay. Oh, and wow. now had I worked for compliance, she was actually, uh, she was, she was suspended because she had the words paparazzi or accessories in her business name. Correct. When I heard that, do you know what I did? I went straight to Facebook search engine and I typed in paparazzi accessories. Okay. I saw paparazzi's Facebook accessories pay Facebook page. And then I was in, in a matter of two minutes, I had screenshotted 20 and I stopped because there was so many. So had I been working for compliance before I would even sent that consultant a thing, a, a, a thing is I would have Googled to see just how many more are out there. So that goes to tell you they pick and choose who they, they keep and, and who they don't keep. And that Heather Dill was not the only one that used paparazzi accessories in their business. And if you don't believe me, Google it now Agreed. and, see. and Agreed. keep going down and it keeps going and going and going, but they don't get turned into compliance because somebody's not jealous of them or they didn't piss somebody off because they're still there. Correct. Correct. Because totally that's agree. the first thing I did when I heard that. And I, I said, Heather, send that to compliance too. Screenshot after. I got tired of taking screenshots. It was so many. Mm -hmm. But it's okay because they didn't have somebody who was turning them in or they were having somebody turn them in and turn them in and turn them in. Well, we and, got. And that's sad. We do have like, we do have some solid information about how it really does work there and how people do get targets. And I actually got solid information on the targets that were on my back. I mean, it was confirmed that Misty me too. Could, could never stand me. Well, at least what? she liked because you didn't drink the Kool-Aid point. and you didn't kiss her butt. Uh, correct. She, she did like Tracy at one point, but Misty Kirby could never stand me ever, ever, which I'm totally okay with because my Listen. goal in, my goal in life is not to have disgusting people like Misty Kirby or Ramey Grimm or Hunter Matthews 
all the, and those kinds of disgusting people actually like me ever. If those people don't like me, I'm actually doing something mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to tell you right now, people like me because I'm a goddamn delight. I keep of trying to are. tell you how delightful I am. And of I don't understand why you don't believe it. I'm a delight. And delightful. actually, the good thing about it is even through all that we shared and the sad things and the bad things, you still make people laugh in the end. You're not laughing at somebody or laughing Listen, at the story that's been told. You're, you're you like shedding light. You have to no guarantee humor. in this world that you will be here from one minute to the next. I want to live my life with joy. I have had too much sadness, too much upset. Correct. I am 50 years old and I have resigned myself to living my life with joy. I have made a decision. I am trying my, does it work all day, every day? No. It of course does not work all day, every day. I got doxxed this weekend. I had to spend like four hours on the phone with police officers all over the country trying to get reports created so that I can get people who should be grown ass adults to take my address and phone number down off the internet because they mad. I'm so tired of adults that act like small children, but that's okay. I'm somebody's mom. I know everybody doesn't have a great day, but I, I did not let it ruin my whole weekend. I try when I can to take minutes of joy. And I am a sarcastic asshole who really enjoys making jokes. And Jerry tells you, I cannot stand to end the conversation on a sad note. I have to make some shitty comment to make everybody laugh because I don't want everybody to leave us with sadness at the end. I want them to be glad they tuned in. I don't want it to be. And most of the time I'm making fun of myself. I told you, what did I tell you at the very beginning? At least I've never talked to you before in my life. Did I not tell you the story about Friday when I fell and busted <laughs> yeah, my ass in the you, garage? You remind me of me and what happens to me. Like yeah, I've never did. even met Lisa. I've never even talked to her before. And I'm like, girl, I fell <laughs> flat on my face in the garage on Friday. I got a bruise on my arm because I hit the shelves. One and, and I said, and I'm telling my kids, I'm falling. No, I'm still falling. It's the last time. I hit the ground. I'm down. I hit the ground. And my kids are like, it's slow motion, like a cartoon. I'm like, I don't know. I'm the most, she's like, Carol, I guess that was the most dramatic thing I've ever seen in my life. I'm like, I thank I'm you for being, I thank you for sharing that with me because I think you could tell I was so nervous and my anxiety was. And you could feed off that. I mean, it was, but I feel so much better. Good. So much better. I so just wanted better. you, you to feel what we want Good. from this is that it's just friends talking. Cause that's what it started out as friends talking and sharing stories. We just happened to do it and then tape it and put it up on the YouTubes, but whatever it's meant to give people information. And I didn't want you to think that it was some ordeal. I wanted you just to, tell us what happened and you did and i'm so glad you shared your story your story i'm i'm glad you shared your story but girl i'm so sorry and i mean right. that sincerely from the bottom of my heart i'm so sorry because you kind of saw the worst of humanity but at you know the, what at the event that was supposed to be you know positivity at its finest but rochelle right. beachy prayed for her prayed for i me think she doesn't later, understand how to spell I pray it's her kind of praying is p-r-e-y i'm pretty sure so. I don't want prayers from a Rochelle Beachy. I don't Correct. want prayers. I don't want prayers from somebody like that because the prayers are not sincere. I used to say that all the time on my live show when right. people were like, Jerry, I'm going to pray for you. No, you ain't. I, no, you yeah. ain't. Because when you're saying no, you're you going to pray for me, but yeah, your actions are showing your true colors. Here, here's, you know, don't even begin to show. Here, here's, here's Erica Cole. I want to cut a bitch. Oh, I pray, dear Lord, Jesus in heaven. I want to pray for Geraldine and Tracy. And then the next day, I'm gonna cut a bitch. Like, right, and then she calls out Trey. She calls out Caroline, and then uses the bra remark and wants to know. And then we're targeting her for race because we're like, "What's up with this bra? Not bro, because my kid and my kids know better. And it has nothing to do with. But I'm like, I'm not a bro. I'm your mom. Okay, no bros here because you will get in trouble for that. I'm your mom. Everything not your bro. you say regarding Erica Cole is racist, girl. Don't right, you but know? She didn't make it a bro. She made it a bra. Caroline, it's, it's a it's, it's a big thing right now, I guess. I I didn't know that adults used bruh, but I guess it's a big thing right now. I don't know. Bruh, bruh. I heard a bro, but I didn't hear a bruh. bruh. I've heard a bra. But yeah, just, just because we're three, you know, you know, because we're three white females talking about this right now, we're all KKK racial people right no, now, man, right? Because guess what? I have children that are of color. My husband is not not the 
American Indian, but he's Asian Indian. Okay, so my kids I, hear like, you. I don't see people for color. I don't either. I see them for who they are. But you, he, and he, my niece is biracial. I don't see color. We well, I have it. Uh, my my whole family is mixed, but we have to. We have to give her. We have to give her a little bit of a reprieve. She sincerely apologized because no, she, she feels. Didn't. She, she hey, I'm just saying her words. She sincerely apologized because she has no idea. She thinks that we just don't like her because of her color and she her said, success. I'm sorry you don't like me because I'm Correct. a successful black female. That, that is her way of sincerely apologizing. I'm sorry that your mother never taught you how to actually apologize to another human being or your dad or whoever raised you. I mean, it doesn't have to be. I'm sorry you didn't figure that out. Sure and just like when I brought up the thing about she, how she could feed us to the alligators the outfits, but that wasn't cross selling had nothing to do with the color of her skin. It's Isn't a fact. There, who made that song? Baby, I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. Okay. I'm looking at her in my head. One more thing. I've had consult or ex consultants message me or we'll get to talking and they'll say, but Patty, let's, we're going to say Patty. But Patty has said all these bad things even before she was on tea time. How is she still a consultant? And my you answer was, what do you think? Because uh, she is taken up for paparazzi and she kisses Misty's behind is, is my Correct. own take. It's my opinion. And Correct. she is, so she's untouchable. Correct. The same thing with Colleen. But well, I, first of all, I don't want to wanna touch them because I don't like them. I don't want to touch them. Second of all, right. um, all the money in the world doesn't buy a clean heart. Mm -mm. That's something you have to actually create in yourself and broadcast to the world. So I think that the religious, all of these religious posts, it, it doesn't mean anything. Sad. It doesn't it's mean so anything sad. at all. So, so sad. I just <laughs> want everyone who watches what we do to understand that our intent here is to give information. It's not, we're not collecting people. We don't work for other companies. We're not recruiting you. We've been, we've been accused of a lot of things. Um, I don't have another business for you to come work for. I am an, in, I am an independent boutique owner. Caroline and I own a small business. We source all of our stuff directly from wholesalers now and we sell it. Um, we're still selling our jewelry from our former company on our website because we had a lot of it and we have to get rid of it. Same you have as everybody every else. Right. You own it. You can do whatever you right. want. But I want to say that. I'm like, it's mine. I own it. I'm selling it. Um, it isn't the jewelry's fault. I keep telling people it isn't the jewelry's fault. Um, for those of you saying, well, I'm never buying another piece again. It, you're buying from consultants. You're buying from humans who already spent money on it. You're not hurting the company by not buying jewelry. You're probably hurting mm -hmm. your friend or the person you're trying to sell it. It depends on who you're buying it from. But it I'm saying, who you're buying it from. if you know somebody's left the company and they're trying to get rid of Correct. their inventory, help them. If you like it, try to shop but with people who are, you know, just trying to get their life back. Know this. It. It's not lead and nickel free. It's not cambium free. And it just dawned on me right now. Like I was thinking because I have other assistants who post my albums because since I left paparazzi i have not touched their jewelry or looked at it so i have other people who deal with it for me and um i was looking at my wall and i saw that it said five dollar paparazzi jewelry lead and nickel free i'm like shit i never had them remove that part so i want to make it very clear that paparazzi jewelry is not lead and nickel free and it's not camdium free which is the one thing that i love so yes. much about it and you might want to repackage it yourself it's very inexpensive i like irises um, i think you it. should not repackage it i think you should keep it I i'm just this is just me i want everybody to know that they're purchasing papa shit i don't want them to think it's from no, my no, no. i don't mean that i'm saying if you don't feel comfortable making the claim oh, that it's nickel and lead free you can put it on another jewelry card you own it it belongs to you you right. can do what you want you can in response but. to that jerry when i watched one of the tea times and you said that i messaged you and i said jerry that part that you said can you please tell me and i said to you had i known that Correct. I would have never sold or and, bought this. And what did jewelry. I tell you to do? I you said, told me to. I said, Google and you it. said to me, Google. Correct. Paparazzi if you Google it. And nickel free. And, 
And I want you to start yep. it from the beginning and go down. You're going to find out stuff. Don't, don't Google it unless you really want to know the truth. Okay. <laughs> and I said to Jerry, but we won't sell our, I said to her, how have they got by with it all these years? Because no one ever challenges them. No so right. Let's Safe Mama, Lead Safe Mama is a website. You all go to Lead Safe Mama. Google Lead Safe Mama. She's tested their jewelry, found that it had trace it had trace minerals in it that they didn't disclose, including antimony and arsenic, cadmium. All of those things are found to have um, health concerns. So. Is every single piece of jewelry not lead nickel free? I don't know. They put out so much, but I can tell you that some of it has been tested. You can't Correct. test every piece. I mean, I guess you could, but it's not. It's been tested by Lead Safe Mama, completely third party, independent of any of us. And it's shown to have uh, traces of all those other things in it. So um, I I've would had, love, I've had two I'd other love sources. to test it. I can't had, test it. Right. I've had two other sources test it, and we haven't brought it here yet because. The naysayers will say, yeah, but this is fake. And how do we know it was paparazzi? And so there are steps that we need to go through in order to do every single positive step so nothing can be debunked, right? Right. So I have seen other results that are exactly like, um, what's her name? The mama, whatever. Let Lead Safe Mama. Lead Let's Safe Mama. I've seen this. I've seen results from multiple other people. Uh, who are in the industry and have tested the jewelry and they get the same results. So it wasn't just from Lead Safe Mama. This is from multiple sources. Right, but However, I, just said, I just know that's one they can go to correct. and look at because she specifically did paparazzi and wrote a big thing about it. So, so the reason why I'm saying this, though, is it's not just the, her pieces. There's others, but those people can be debunked by the paparazzi consultants who want to remain blind and say that it's lead and nickel free their jewelry for a fact not all of their pieces and we don't know some might actually exist that way but i'm just seriously doubting it um are not lead and nickel free and they're not cadmium free and they contain other gross right, right. And can I, let me say something jerry my husband i'm sorry my no. husband is a chemical engineer okay and the word and i can't say that there's the word that you just said and there's another c word and I looked at my husband and I said, because I was just, my mouth just dropped when I, when you said Google that and I Googled it and there was just, I, I had to stop reading at some point because it just goes on and on and on. So there's another word that starts with a C, but I cannot pronounce it. But I did when my husband was, was in, cause he does fly a lot. He's anyway, actually he could test it, but he works at a water soluble. Correct. Plant, so they use water product, not metals. Okay. So I asked him when I went after I Googled that other C word, not the the one you just said, but there's another one and it's a C3 and a C6. And he said exactly to me, Lisa, if it's that C word with the three, it's bad. And if it's the C with the six, I didn't want to think about that. It's even worse. So all I can say is please don't let me find out that that's in there because there'll be no stopping this girl right here. Cause I would have never, ever, ever, ever had anything to do with and that hurts my heart to know that i've so, sold jewelry and, and blessed and told people it's lead and equal free not to right. mention what else it can have with it correct correct and there's ways for us to to make it happen but we have to jump through hoops to make sure that right it can't be debunked that's the thing is and y'all we're trying to be we work on this stuff as much yep, as we are, can with full-time jobs we really do we have more than full-time jobs because we own our own businesses it's more than a full-time job um we are and if anybody has any ideas about how to do it faster or better please help I we're do there still, we're, i do we're, still we're, have something in the works jerry just so you know good i dropped this on my husband on saturday night and he had to leave again out of time but he knows and he's got it because because he's worked for several different plants that were okay our perfect four metals. so he has a few uh We'll take there. all the help we can get. We're yeah. not, we're not proud. <laughs> we'll take all that. We need, right. We're and, not going anywhere. So that's just, that's why they're so pissed is because you guys aren't going anywhere and more people are sharing their story. And I personally will help you guys any thank you. way I can. Thank you. Thank you. For me, it's about the truth. And I was heartbroken when I read that about the lead mama and I didn't want to believe it, but it was right there. And that was many, there was many different things that came together that absolutely broke my heart with this company. And the last, I'll say it over and over again, the last year, the teammates who truly knew me on my team 
saw me and my customers who weren't part of paparazzi, but just watched me for so many years, saw me completely change into a different person. And a lot of people, oh, it's the money. Geraldine doesn't care anymore because no. she has the money. The it was quite the opposite. Through. Because I was making so much commissions off of my team, it made me feel like total shit that I preached and I supported oh, and I pathetic. stood for a company that was blatantly, knowingly lying to me. Look at that precious puppy. Are you she is my anxiety dog. I'm sorry. She's barking. So I want She's to adorable. Seat. Probably because we're getting too feisty. Coming from my whole three pound pup. And you know what? She, she I usually rub her with the anxiety. And I did that today, y'all, until I came on. My anxiety was so bad. And I would just rub her and she'd sit right by my side. And she's been by my side this whole time. But oh. anyway, go. I'm finished what you're saying. I'm sorry. No, no. I'm just saying that. Anybody who has any morals or convictions and says, well, I'm still going to try to make it in this company and you don't care that they're telling you to lie about their jewelry and to, to lie about all these things, lie about the true deaths that happened at convention. And uh, they literally are having you lie so you can put money in your pocket. If that's OK with you, again, I want you to stay at paparazzi. You're right. Well, you have found I, your home. I want. I want to have the real results of the testing first because I want to have proof to show people because I think it's important because one of the reasons I joined paparazzi was because Caroline was sensitive to nickel and jewelry. And when her ears didn't break out from the jewelry that we got, um, we were because, all in. Hold on, the, the hooks, the fish hooks that go into your ears and the posts, they are. Okay, but, but not the, the but not the body of the jewelry, there. and that's what we found out because that was the second part I was going to say. I got contacted by somebody who put a necklace on, and it literally burned a scar mm -hmm. onto them. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. are somebody who has actually been burned or damaged by a piece of the jewelry, please let us know because we are trying. And you probably didn't keep the jewelry and all of that other stuff, but I'm saying I, we're trying to get together a list of potential like if it's if it's the silver versus the gold versus the copper versus the brass we're paying for this out of our own pockets you guys we're trying to concentrate on what is most likely to be the damaging areas so that we can get the right stuff tested because i can't test a hundred thousand pieces of jewelry i'm hoping to get 10 to 15 Correct. but we want to focus on it so if you all have a story to tell and you can tell us if you can remember what kind of jewelry it was i would appreciate so we could narrow down some categories because paparazzi releases a whole lot of jewelry y'all whole lot mm -hmm. so okay um you know me i'm always the one that's cutting it off right <laughs> we got to cut it off i have Lisa. so much to do Jerry, thank you, because I know you're super busy today. Lisa, thank you from the bottom of my heart from, totally. for telling your story. I know that was not easy. I know that was just tough to remember and to regurgitate. And I, I'm so glad you reached out to us. I'm so glad you're a part of the group. I'm so glad you're doing better. You didn't have permanent injuries from that. Um, just thank you. Thank you very much. No, we'll I want to thank you. you guys, because if there was no Tracy Reed or no Jerry and Caroline doing this, I would have never, ever, I knew one day I'd get to tell my story, but honestly, I thought it would be in front of Misty Kirby when I just didn't give a crap if I got fired or not. But I she would never give you the time of day. No. Oh, I know that now. It's not the, no, I know that now. Absolutely. And so, and before I get off here too, please know if you're watching this, that I had after convention in 2018 and the, I just disappeared. Okay. I still bought, but nowhere near like before, because again, my goal when my health was better was to go live again. And if I don't sell jewelry, that's fine. And guess what, ladies? I haven't been live in three years except to give away jewelry. I'm starting from the ground up again with what I'm doing. But you know what? I know that if I put in the time and I put in the work, I can be successful. And I don't have to have paparazzi's jewelry to do it. So that's first right. of all, believe in yourself and don't think that you can't do it because you're doing it. And you don't need paparazzi to continue to That's do That's right. And there are people in there paving that. the way. There are people mm -hmm. in there paving right. the way. People who are willing to show you. I mean, the Daniel Boons is starting your own boutique are in there, y'all. They've cut a path and they're sharing their, their tools and, and giving you their maps. So Trust and again, me. Was, thank you both because I already feel like so much lighter. Like a good. A I'm so glad. Good. So I thank you. Good. You're welcome. Both of you. Thank you. It was our doing it and know that I'm in the background cheering you all on. 
and anybody that's watching, if you need a friend, I'm here with no strings attached, okay? Um, and if there's anything I can do for anybody, I will be here because that's how it should be. It is how, how it should, should be. be. And that's how we're trying to do it from, a, from, from now on. That's how we're trying to do it. So, all right, y'all. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out. Um, reach out to us if you need to. Uh, if nothing else, we'll be back next Tuesday. I'm Tracy. I'm Feisty. And I'm Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> Bye. Thank you, ladies. Bye.